Good evening, party people, and welcome back to the bar with an X by name. Your bartender is Cameron. Hello there. Are you feeling bitter this evening? Bitter, you know, like it's a negative feeling, something you get and you're like, that kind of bitter feeling. Well, uh, evidently a couple of the bottles on my bar this evening are also having that bitter feeling because they are in fact bitters. That's the pun. That's how we're starting things around here. This episode is all about just kind of like sampling bitters. I'm being perfectly honest and forthright. I don't really know too much about bitters. And to be honest, the only time that I really use bitters aside from when they are specifically called out for in cocktails is sometimes like dropping them into some water just to like sample what they taste like. Lo and behold, a lot of the bitters that I have in my collection, which you see all before you, usually say exactly what they taste like right in the bottle, such as celery bitters or orange bitters or peach bitters. They taste like orange, celery, and peach respectively. I know I said that incorrectly. It was a joke. I'm glad you caught me on that. So as in essence, what I was curious about when going into, when I was looking at my bottles and whatnot was the things of my collection that I really don't know how to use, don't know how to properly use. Um, and bitters happens to be one of them. Some bitters are like very like known to be used in particular types of cocktails. So to name some in particular, you have things like Peshawd's bitters, which has a history of being used in Sazerac cocktails, or Angostura bitters, which has a history of being used in Manhattan cocktails, or orange bitters, which kind of pop up in a variety of different places, but like they get like used in a couple of them, like martinis and such like that, where you just add that little extra like citrus note to them, I guess with a couple of dashes of orange bitters. Makes for a nice smell to it. If you don't, don't have like, let's say like, an orange peel to be able to express them with. So the kind of one that I wanted to do this evening was trying to get an idea of all the different bitters that I have behind my bar, because some of them are actually pretty interesting, and I, it just feels bad that I don't know how to use them in, in the ways that either they were intended to be used, or as a, as a means to actually use them as like this, uh, as an ingredient to play around with. Uh, I think the one in particular that I always keep coming back to, uh, and I don't know how to properly use it, is some of my specialty stuff that I've picked up at stores over, over the course of the past couple of years, like a very specific flavor like charred cedar and currant current like the berry or uh what is it some specific mole bitters with a hint of spiciness to them or there's this other one cherry bark vanilla bitters now uh i have some nice memories associated with a couple of these guys like um and and i'll, I'll go through them as we kind of pass through each of these bitters and this is just the the bitters that i happen to have behind my bar pulled them all out here to see uh prepared a couple of cocktails for them and to see like i, I don't know the, if i could even pick up certain particular notes about these things and just kind of like play around with them uh a lot of these bitters are from uh companies that like they put a lot of there's they put a lot of lore into these things so uh i kind of want to take the opportunity to go down and see some of that lore too in general to start things off with what exactly is a bitters right what exactly is a bitters according to the page for wikipedia bitters is is not only a singular term, but also a plural term. If you are talking about multiple bitters, or you are talking about a bottle of bitters, or I am gonna put this bitters into my drink, is apparently the English way of referring to that because English is a very, very odd language, but one that I practice every single day of the year. In any case, bitters is exactly how it sounds. It is some sort of solution, usually based with alcohol, actually hopefully based with alcohol, otherwise you wouldn't be able to drink it. It would just be poison at that point, but like not like drinkable poison as as uh, alcohol actually is. Ethanol, I believe, is the correct uh, chemical term for that. But once upon a time, and I think uh, the one page said it went back all, all the way to the ancient Egyptians, where they had a, a, uh, a habit of taking certain medicinal botanicals and herbs and whatnot and throwing them into wine to, you know, spice up the wine a little bit, making them a little more bitter to the taste. Uh, apparently it continued, and as most things do throughout all of human history, to wind its way into multiple different aspects of the world, including the, I think, somebody said, so, one of the Wikipedia things said, like, I think it was the Americas in like the 1800s in canary wine. And I don't know what canary wine is, but it's beyond the scope of this episode. Needless to say, you can take things that are bitter and make them into bitters. You can take things that have a bitter flavor to them and mask them with other botanicals to make them a little more palatable. For instance, the chemical quinine, which is used as an anti-malaria agent, can be found in tonic water and trace amounts, but also in some bitters as well. It's got a very, very bitter taste to it. But if you add like, let's say like maybe a little bit of sweetening agent, or uh, other stuff, uh, then you can get something that is actually quite palatable, either as, I, I I suppose you could drink it on its own, but you can mix it with a tonic water, or like regular water, or cocktails in general, as often things do when you come to a bar, for instance. 
What's also interesting to note is, I believe the quote goes something along the lines of, the original cocktail is merely some, I'm just gonna read it straight because I don't wanna try to butcher this, a stimulating liqueur composed of spirits of any kind, sugar, water, and bitters. So the idea goes all the way back to like the original cocktail recipe where if you take your sugar and your water and your bitters, you've got a cocktail. Which you know, way back a couple of months ago, I had my uh, buddy Eric on and we were going through a book uh, called Imbibe by Ooh, it might be David Wondrich, perhaps? I don't have it on me, otherwise I'd double check myself, and if I'm completely misquoting that, please somebody come in and swift correct, swiftly correct me. Uh, but we, we tried to make a cocktail, which was essentially that, sugar, water, and bitters. There are improved versions of the cocktail with altered ratios and stuff, but we still had that bitters in there. It, uh, you know, some cocktails, like I mentioned before, Sazerac, Manhattan, have bitters as a part of their recipe, and there's many, many others out there, as it seems. So what I kind of want to do is just kind of pop on down the list of the various different cocktail bitters that I have around here and see if I, there's, there's anything is anything interesting that I can find about these particular uh, makers of bitters that I have here. I like to try to, I, I think more recently, I've been attempting as at least as best as I possibly, possibly can to kind of get a little bit more of an appreciation of like who's actually making these spirits and stuff. Because there, there, there are often times of the, like the, of the small number of times that I really go down certain rabbit holes, there's some really interesting narratives that wind up popping up. Where has some historical aspects too like for example why in the world the Angostura bottle has a different sized label on it than the bottle itself once upon a time there were two Angostura brothers and apparently one was in charge of the label and one was in charge of the bottle and supposedly people got their wires crossed and they were like well whatever it works so we'll we'll take it um, so I guess we'll start things off here with trying to talk about Angostura bitters. I don't plan on using every single one of these bitters in cocktails this evening. If I could and had the time to do so, I would love to try every single one of them because there's like, there's like a dozen over here. Um, but alas, I am only one man and uh, there are just too many bitters to go through. Uh, I will be tr trying to taste a little bit of each of them though in a very interesting... I'm going to pull a little bit of water. Just get a little taste. What does celery bitters and water taste like? Hopefully celery. Orange bitters and water. Hopefully orange. Uh, aromatic bitters. Hopefully aromatic. Angostura bitters is the one that I feel like is the most prevalent bitters that at least I've seen out there. And so I'm just gonna go straight to the, I'm gonna do this lightning style. I'm just gonna write down the list of whether, what, with, if the website says something cool about their bitters, cool. We're gonna go down for that. And if not, whatever then. First up on the list of our Angostura bitters. Am I of legal drinking age? This is gonna be a common theme throughout this evening. Of Websites asking me whether I am of illegal drinking age. Um, actually, come to think of it, do I have the ability to... Oh, no, I, I wouldn't be able to see it from here. I was thinking maybe I can actually put it up on the screen a little bit for everybody else to see. We might be able to... You know what? I haven't played around with that in a little while. Let's see if I doth have the power to do so. Where is my... There is a chrome. There is another chrome. Can I bring the chrome out from over here? If I go up here and drag it over... That might be, that might be. Let's see, if I click this button. Oh, we actually see a Chrome webpage. Oh, that's great. Okay, so apparently I haven't broken that yet. Let's go to Angostura Bitters. I can't see very well from here. So in case that, you know, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna blow this up a bit. Now I, <laughs> now I can see what's going on. I can actually read it all the way from over here, despite the fact that you can see it right down here. Angostura, are we all, are we all over 21 over here? It's okay, I'm the one answering. That is gonna be A-OK. -okay. Maybe I should get my glasses for this. If it becomes a problem, I will send my glasses to it. Well, evidently, there's many different types of Angostura bitters, but what is your story? What is your story, Monsieur Angostura? Or something like that. Here's the Angostura story. Can we can we blow that up such that everybody can read? Wow. Oh. Oh. Oh my god, it keeps going. There is evidently a very long history to Angostura, but hopefully they can give me the cliff notes. At the very, very top. The story of Angostura Bitters is a journey through time. It started in 1824 when founder Dr. Johann Siegert first produced aromatic bitters as a medicinal tincture designed to alleviate stomach ailments. In the 1870s, Dr. Siegert's three sons migrated to Trinidad, among them Don Carlos Siegert, who pioneered the brand, establishing Angostura, aromatic bitters as an integral ingredient in cocktails and in food. The rest, as they say, is history. As, as these ones say. Angostura Aromatic Bitters is today a staple for bartenders and cocktail enthusiasts, professional and home cooks alike. Bounded by, oh, I swiped too hard. Bounded only by, bounded only by creativity and the imaginations of those who use it. Do you have an imagination? Do you have a bottle of Angostura Bitters? Put the two together. 
The first thing that I thought of with my imagination when I imagined that scenario was just popping off the top of the bottle and taking a swig of it, which for some cocktails, it doesn't need call for stuff like that. As I'm flipping through this page here, apparently the story goes all the way up to the year 2018, all the way back from, what was it? I <laughs> trying to 1824, as I can see clearly on my screen over there. Angostura bitters comes in many different qualities. The only two that I have here are aromatic and orange. Aromatic bitters will often find themselves in cocktails such as the Manhattan, where it is used to add like a, I found that they are rather cinnamony, I think. Cinnamony, kind of a little more complex than that. And actually, what I'll do here is I'm just gonna take a little bit of the bitters and the, usually what I like to try to do, or at least this is my method of doing so, and there's probably other ones out there, and alas, I'm not gonna spend too much time dwelling on the method and me methodology behind it. But usually when I'm trying to try when I'm trying to try bitters, usually what I'll do is just like I, I drink water throughout the day. So I'll just put a couple dashes of those bitters into my water to get an idea of exactly what's going on. Yo! I see my bro Lycos that just popped in over here. That dude was playing Kingdom Hearts previously. He's been going for like six hours so far, so the fact that this is the last destination on the Lycos train journey is an absolute pleasure how is everybody doing this evening we've got bitters tonight bitters are interesting because uh, it's actually funny so my buddy lycos and i we like to we like to hang out we're good friends and stuff and he's not very much into alcohol and oddly enough I don't know exactly how this relates. However, I'm going to go down this train of thought anyways. You can actually buy bitters like this in the store. They are, at least in this case, 44% or about 88 proof of actual, actual drinkable, drinkable alcohol in them. But you can like pick them up at ShopRite. You can pick them up at Walmart. And uh, I, I suppose I've never been carded for buying bitters. And uh, I did try to buy bitters when I was younger and I didn't get carded because you're just totally allowed to just buy them at the register and go. I don't know exactly how it works with those like more smart terminals now where like they're like, oh, you have an age restricted item in there. I don't even know if they do that anymore. But in any case, it's funny. I thought of Angostura. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of water into a cup here. I'm gonna have my bucket on standby because this is just gonna be a lot of like sipping and stuff. Cause what I wanna be able to do is try all the bitters, give them all tastes, just to, just to like, there are some of these that I haven't tasted in a while. I just wanna experience that with you guys. And then we're gonna see if we can take some of them and put them in the cocktails. The more interesting ones, I mean. I mean like, again, if you wanna use something like an Angostura, just like, I don't know, make a Manhattan. It's easy. Some sweet vermouth, some whiskey, and some bitters. Not too bad. You want something with um, the, 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 we'll get there. We'll get there. So I'm gonna put like one, two, three drops of bitters into my little cordial glass. But interesting. Actually, you know what? Let me, if we're all experiencing this for what it is, let me take my little cocktail angle, come along over here, and give it a turn. Give it a turn. Give it a turn. Trying to give it a turn best as I possibly can. Let me finagle with this. Finagling, finagling, finagling. And then I will eventually switch it to the cocktail angle because we're cool like that. Just like that. So now we've probably got a view of what this glass looks like. Yeah, we do. I've never tried it from that angle before, but we're making things work around here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my water and uh, hopefully not spill it over the place. This is some Angostura, Angostura bitters, just the regular aromatic ones. I'm going to fill it up with some water. As you can see, that bright red color is still sticking around. Now, uh, interestingly enough, I don't exactly know where the red color in Angostura bitters come from. I was doing some research earlier today that might suggest that certain liqueurs out there that sport a very red color may actually get that color from certain types of bugs that they used to like mound, like mash up and put into the solution to give a certain color. I don't exactly remember what type of bug, but it is red, and supposedly the rumor goes that that is how Campari gets its signature red color. Angostura though, I don't really know. But so, for our Angostura bitters, it's a very nice red color. On the nose, it smells like water, I guess. It's a little muted. But I'm getting some, like, slight fruit notes. Like, almost as if it were, like, an like a orange or grapefruit. But also, like, cabinet spice. It almost smells like, like you stuck your face into, like, a freshly varnished wooden cabinet. It's kind of woody. And it's kind of, like, like rustic in smell and in terms of the taste now another thing that i want to outline is that these bitters in general and i only have these angostura bottles right here to look from one is 44 percent and one is 28 percent. i didn't realize there was that drastic difference between the two of them um but you can there's not usually you use so little bitters in the cocktails that you make with them is if you're just putting drops that is that like 
technically, for all intents and purposes, like you're not really gonna get drunk off of a cocktail that uses mixer, mixer, dilution, and bitters. Although, to be fair, if you are a very, very uh, motivated individual, I'm sure if you down a couple bitters and waters, you'll uh, you'll feel something eventually. Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna take a sip of this, maybe a little more. I don't want to go too crazy. A lot of bitters to go through, so we'll try it. Angostura bitter. I guess like I could very well put up on the board all the different. You know what? I gotta. I should do that. This is this is this is part of the job. Right now we're playing around with various different types of bitters. Bitters. Oh, this marker draws so well. Angostura. A lot of erasing and stuff. Let's see how long it takes for me to get through all these bitters just putting them in water. And then there will be cocktails. There will definitely be cocktails. Cinnamon. But not like a very forward cinnamon. It's like a it's like um it's a sweet cinnamon. It's not just it's not just like the it's not just the taste either. It is the texture. I found that Angostura bitters, at least in previous experience when added to cocktails, adds a certain like almost like Christmassy smell to it. Something that's a little more I thought of like that the cabinet before and how rustic it could smell on the inside with varnish or wood notes or whatever. And uh, this feels very like a uh, piquant like a cinnamon spice or a clove spice, which is good. Again, there's probably other notes in there. I mean, apparently the Angostura aromatic bitters recipe is a uh, um I guess proprietary. Nobody really knows. Delightful flavor, it says in the back. Put it in jellies, sherbets, ice cream, similar desserts. Get a bottle, read it as well. But it's, uh, it's pretty good. Angostura bitters. Not too bad. The next one is we also have uh, a... Whoa! Words. We also have orange bitters from Angostura. I think what we'll do is we'll go Angostura, and then we'll move over to uh, one of the other companies that I have over here, the Bitter Truth, which also has their orange bitters. And I'm curious to see what the what the comparison is between the two of them. So let's pop back over here, put this cordial black glass right back where it was, and add about three dashes of Angostura orange bitters. One, two, three. I like the bottle on this one. It looks orange. Tells you exactly what you're getting yourself into. I like honesty when it comes to containers. A very white color. There's really no color at all. The liquid itself, thankfully, is not actually orange. Which I say thankfully because I feel like if there was any orange in there, it might be like from some artificial source or whatever. So it's a clear, it's a, it's a clear cordial container. You don't have to worry too. We're not going to dwell on that too much. What does it smell like? Very orangey. And when I think orangey, I think more like the juice of the orange as opposed to the zest of the orange. So this is almost like I'm smelling like freshly squeezed orange juice. But like with a little bit of like tartness to the smell, if that makes any sense at all. There is something that I order at one of the restaurants back at home. And it is almost, it tastes almost exactly like these bitters in the water. And it's interesting because, so what I'm getting here is obviously those notes of orange. It's not quite orange juice and it's not quite orange zest. It's somewhere in between, but it's also got this like heavy note of vanilla to it, which is actually, I'm realizing is very, very difficult to shake off when it's when it's diluted in this way. It's very orange, but it's also very vanilla and like, like potently vanilla, which is something that I have never noticed before when um, adding orange bitters, these particular Angostura orange bitters, to my cocktails. That is really interesting. And now I'm even more curious to know, comparing, let's say, these orange bitters to these orange, nope, these orange bitters, which come from a completely different company called The Bitter Truth, uh, to which I actually have a, I have a book on them. So let me like do a little, Switching over here, just so everybody knows what's going on. We try to make sure that everyone knows what's happening over here. Don't want people getting left, uh, left behind, you know? I move fast. I'm a very fast talker. They say that the people who talk the fastest are the ones who don't know what they're talking about, and I can completely confirm that. I have no idea what I'm talking about, really. I just like to dress up funny to make me feel special. This is a bitter truth. Bitter. Truth, and I've got quite a number of them actually. Oh, you know what? Actually, come and take a I have a little container of these guys. I wonder if I can find it. Let me see if this is still down here. 
It's a little container of bitters. Where are you? All right, I must have put it in the other closet. Evidently, I don't have the cute little tin that these guys came in. Bucket. Sip it. Nice. Mm, it smells good. Put a little water in there, just like. Delicious. And actually, you know what? All fancy. Just gonna wipe out the glass. I'm the only one here. Or maybe I'm not the only one here. Just imagine everybody in chat right now is all sitting right here. It just extends infinitely in that direction off the camera. I can see I can see Lycos over there, and I can see I can see Lorelai over there, and I can see whoever else is lurking in chat over there. <laughs> Regulars like Dom and Brad and like Amy Chow and oh, they're just they're all over there. Hi everybody. <laughs> Finally, I can speak. Says Lycos. Twitch was fighting me, dude. Twitch is very argumentative as of late. And I say as of late, as if it wasn't already argumentative and just like, uh, ugh, you know how it is? That's my bro Lycos. He's a great dude, and he was playing Kingdom Hearts, which uh, I really want to play Kingdom Hearts at some point. In any case, so we moved on to the Bitter Truth, and I came across the Bitter Truth bitters. I've heard them mentioned in videos. I've seen them while passing along the market shows, and once upon a time, I went to a little, like, a, it was like a liquor festival of sorts. I think it was Eat Philadelphia, and it was specifically the, uh, I think the wine and beverages, like, thing that they did. Uh, which was cool. And so what was interesting was that I walked past this Bitter Truth stand and I saw a little, I saw, saw a little book. And I was like, oh my God, sir, how can I get that book? And he's like, well, I'll just give it to you. So I got a book for free, which was awesome. But you see, that is an excellent way to get somebody to want to buy something. Because as I held onto this book and walked around the rest of the little conference thing and festival, I was like, I was looking inside of it and I saw cocktail recipes and I saw descriptions of the bitters and I saw different types of, they've got mention of orange blossom water and rose water in here. You don't even know what that is. It's got nothing to do with anything we're doing this evening. But I was like, wow, that's really cool. It's a pretty cool book. And so I came back and I was like, so you're selling bitters too, right? And they're like, damn straight we are. So I bought a number of bitters and I got them all at once and I don't have to use any of them. But that's fine. That's why we have the recipe book. Actually, when we wind up getting into the cocktail portion, a number of the recipes were just ripped straight out of this book. It's called Welcome to the Bitter Truth. Bitters of the Coors and Spirits for better drinks. It's by the company. No sponsor. I just like them. It sounds cool. The Bitter Truth. The Truth. The Truth. The bitter, bitter truth. So actually, I'm super curious now doing the side-by-side -side comparison of the Angostura orange bitters and the bitter truth orange bitters because Angostura so far is like, it's like sweet orange, almost like, almost like clementine -y, and then vanilla, like lots of vanilla. And I don't think, I, I hope that I didn't like contaminate my glass from the Angostura. I don't think I have. This is like a little orangey now, but like, it's okay. I'm not a scientist for the purpose of this stream. I'm just a drinker, just like you. Or an observer, I guess. Are you drinking at home? Anybody following along with the drinks over here? Got some bitters? How do they taste? I hope they taste good. These ones are tasting all right. Oh, I was trying to, boop, 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 boop. Trying to go back, there we go. Let's add one, two, three. These are tiny little drops. Four, five. These are tiny little drops of bitters from the bitter truth it seems boop, 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 boop. there you go buddy and i'm gonna fill you up with a i'm gonna give it a smell hmm. very very the alcohol note is very prominent here what is the percentage on this guy the bitter truth bitters is 39 percent by volume as opposed to the angostura being only 28 percent by volume that is a difference like i said i'm not a drinker but vector is oh vector do you drink my goodness vector the crocodile from the critically acclaimed sonic the hedgehog brand wow so right off the bat interestingly enough this does have an orange color to it you can kind of see very very slightly i say maybe if i put this book behind it there's a little bit of an orange tint there that is mighty interesting, as opposed to the Angostura not having any coloration whatsoever. I'd say that that's like a straw color. Then again, I did just put a shit ton of water into it, comparatively, ratio-wise. So if we were thinking that it was going to be a bright and vibrant color, we were wrong. We set ourselves up incorrectly to begin with. So again, this is smelling. My nose is a little stuffed, to be honest. My nose just ain't up the ain't up the snuff this evening, ain't up the sniff this evening. 
but uh, it still smells kind of like it did before. It's it's like orange, not quite zest, not quite the juice, but a little bit. Eh, it's all right. Oh my goodness gracious! Bitter orange. That's a bitter orange. That's interesting. So the bitter truth. I guess this kind of makes sense, right? They call themselves the bitter truth. Bitter Truth Orange Bitters taste a lot more like the bitter orange flavor that I get from a bottle of Campari. Campari is a liquor that I love using in my Negronis, and it is a bitter orange liqueur. And when I first got my hands on this, when I tried to taste this, somebody was like, oh, it's, it's bitter orange. And I was like, well, it's certainly bitter, but I don't really get the orange notes in it. Now, after a while, after becoming a little more familiar with it and now being on like my third bottle of it in my life, because I, I like using it so much, is that there is like this undeniable citrusness to it. And there is a sort of side citrusness here. This almost reminds me of uh, once upon a time I made a little like orange, uh, no, it wasn't orange. It was lemon preserves. And I tried to make lemon preserves and then I also put limes in it. I also put grapefruits in it. Just you basically take these things, you boil them down, you put them into some oil and add some salt to it and seal it up in a container and you've basically preserved it. And I noticed that in particular, grapefruits were super duper duper bitter. They were not very pleasant to eat when in preserved form. The lemons, oh, beautiful. Limes, a little crunchy, but pretty tasty as well. Lemons up on top, grapefruits way, way down at the bottom. This is like the bitterness of a grapefruit, but I am aware that there are areas of the world that grow oranges that are bitter like in like a grapefruit. It was like the equivalent to what I get from a grapefruit. And I want to say, and maybe I'm being, maybe I'm off base here because Campari is Italian, but I think it's places, I think it's a place in Italy, maybe Milan or something that you can find those bitter oranges. Actually, I do remember, I think it was uh, one of my one of my brothers went to, I think, Italy for a trip or something. And I think they were saying, I, I feel like there was a story having to do with the bitter oranges that they were like, don't eat those oranges on the tree. You're not gonna like them. And they said, I'm gonna do it anyway, munch. And they were like, wow. Bitters. But this is very bitter. As opposed to like, the Angostura, both both of the Angostura's, like when mixed with the water, did not come about to be very, very like bitter flavored forward. This is very bitter. Like there is a little bit of that orange note there, and maybe even like a hint of like orange blossom water, which is also kind of bitter, but not pertaining to what we're doing here. It's different. I use it in grenadine though. It's very tasty. But this is this is interesting because of how prominently bitter it is, despite the fact that it has now been diluted with water. And I'll say, I'll say as well, there was something else that I got there on my second sip. And it's like, I wanna say it's almost like, it's like if I'm using the term correct, it's almost like acetone -y. But like almost, almost a little, a little chemical, but like not in a bad way. Almost, almost like chemical in the sense that like, you know, some people describe certain scotches as being a little like, um, almost like varnish or like, like as if it was like freshly like treated wood. And that's the same thing I'm getting here, interestingly enough, with the Bitter Truth orange bitters. But the Bitter Truth has a number of other bitters as well. But I feel like I jumped straight into it without giving a proper, proper introduction. Do they have like, oh, they have a little page on our story on page nine of Welcome to the Bitter Truth. I'm only gonna read the first paragraph. If you're interested, get the book, man, get the book. The Bitter Truth, our story originally cocktail bitters were the ingredient that distinguished cocktails from other categories of beverages, such as toddies and slings and fizzes and sours or punches. For decades, they were an essential component of good cocktail creations. The start of prohibition curtailed consumers' drinking habits and cocktail bitters almost sank into oblivion. Only a few brands survived that period, but even after that, not all of them managed to re-establish themselves in the new market. And then they talk about the founding of the Bitter Truth. So I guess that's really the, the crux of it. Uh, essentially what they did is they've been doing, the German company Bitter Truth since 2006 has been doing stuff. They appeared first at the London Bar Show and they owe the, the success of the show to bartender Steven Berg and Alexander Hawk. And they produced, distribute cocktail bitters now in, uh, in Germany and elsewhere. That's apparently where it starts. And there was a, they have a number of different types of bitters. Of note, 
the ones that I have here this evening that I got in this cute little like cocktail pack of mine was the orange bitters, which we just gave a try of. We also have aromatic bitters, kind of like how our Angostura had an aromatic and orange uh, equivalent. We had celery bitters, also got Jerry Thomas's own decanter aromatic bitters, as well as Creole bitters. Creole being like, well, I mean, I got a book for it. We can describe it because I'll be honest. I do know what a celery is. I've eaten celery. I think celery is very, very tasty. I do know what an orange is, and like I'm slightly familiar with things that are aromatic, you know, like a aroma, like an aroma. It, it hits your nose, and you're like, ah, yes, that is aromatic because it has an aroma. Um, Creole, not as much familiar on. I've heard it mentioned in songs, like country songs and whatnot. And um, specifically, Jerry Thomas and, and his decanter bitters are something that I'm totally unaware of. But uh, luckily, the lexicon as a, a source of truth on those. I wanna jump into the ones that I'm already familiar with, and then we'll move on to the ones that I'm not as well familiar, familiar with. So, taking the center stage now, we're gonna try some uh, of Jerry, T uh, whoa, the bitter truth is aromatic bitters, as opposed to, let's say, Angostura's aromatic bitters. We'll take it back to the angle over here to get a nice view of what kind of color is gonna come out of this bottle. I genuinely don't know. From my perspective, or I guess, it's, it's a, they're all dark bottles to begin with. They're all dark bottles, so I don't know what color it's gonna come out. I'm gonna guess red because I'm biased from Angostura, to be honest, although I could be very wrong. What color do you think it is? Are you curious? I'm curious. One, two, three, four. There's that, these, these containers are really difficult to get like big, big like, big like whoops out of, big drops out of it. So from what I can tell from my perspective, there's really not a lot in there. It's the, there's like nothing. These are teeny tiny like, Dash containers, um, but I'll add some water into it. It's looking like a brown. I think it's gonna come out orange. Yellow, very nice. Certainly not as yellow, or certainly it's definitely more yellow than the one that came before it. How does that look against my white hand? Just like a little, it's orange. I'd accept orange or uh, yellow as the correct answers here from what I could tell. Right off the bat, I guess I probably should have smelled the, um, the actual bitters themselves. Also very Christmassy spice. This is like really heavy on like the clove note with a little bit of like, like there are some pine, this potpourri that sits in my parents' bathroom that has like pine cones and stuff on it. And it's, it was like encased in like this, like this cinnamon wax soap thing. It smells like that. It's very Christmassy to me. It's also very my parents' bathroom to me. Not a negative statement. A very positive statement, a very nostalgic one. Brings me back to my childhood. But yeah, that is very, this is very, very pleasant. Very piquant, very of the cabinet spice. Uh, very heavy notes on the clove there. This is almost like opening up like a fresh jar. Of, well, actually, hold on a second. Is this as close to opening up a jar of clove as I think it is? Let's do a comparison. I happen to have cloves prepped for garnish time. Bit of truth, aromatic bitters. One nostril. Clove. Ooh, slightly different. A little less, a little less savory from the aromatics here. Might have a, maybe a bit of allspice in there. I think I have allspice over here too, maybe. No, that's definitely in the, that's in the cabinet. Not gonna, not gonna spend the time on that. It is pretty close to the clove though, and I think there's other stuff going on in there. It might be clove and allspice are the notes that I'm getting off of the aromatic bitters to be, um, first off. What does it taste like? Hmm, it's very woodsy. I like that. That is incredibly pleasant. I'll say this taste reminds me instead of so instead of being very, very cabinety, very, very like like fresh wooden cabinets and rustic houses on the home front. This is a lot more like of the forest. This reminds me of, like, legitimately, like, those, those notes of the pine cones and the potpourri in my parents' bathroom are not that far off now, because I'm getting notes of, like, how the forest smells back at home in, like, the, the fall time. It's very pine cones. It's very pine trees. It's very woodsy, but not like, but not like sawn wood that's been formed into a piece of furniture. It's like wood fresh from the, I guess fresh from the forest, really. 
that's really pleasant. That's given me a great bit of nostalgia. But it's definitely not far gone on those those notes of like clove and like a little bit of allspice. There is a piece of these bitters, the uh, these are their bitter truth aromatic bitters that remind me of a bottle of liquor that I have in my collection called Nochino, which I made from black walnuts actually from my hometown. And it's like that was made with like I think there was vanilla, lemon zest, and there might have been like cinnamon stick in there. I don't exactly remember the recipe off the top of my head, but the crux of that were these black walnuts, which look green when they fall from the tree, but when you put them in stuff, they turn like a jet black and they'll is actually we're talking about it interestingly enough pulling a lot more bottles out from underneath the bar for the purposes of um, demonstration than I thought I would this is the bottle of Nochina that I have it is um, a brown bottle so you really don't get the full crux of exactly what it looks like however I'll show you I don't mind this is a little bit of the Nochino that I've got and it is like a jet black color that's what we got and like the actual walnuts themselves will become a color like this when you have them sitting in the liquor for a while. And actually, yeah, it's not quite it's not quite walnutty compared to the 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 actual aromatic bitters. It's not quite walnutty. So it's a little off, but those notes of like like pine trees and like in the northern areas, like guess like for me it's New England, those are not far gone. Those are not walnuts. Very, very similar and very nostalgic for me. But so in addition to, let's say we had our aromatic bitters so far, we basically tested our aromatic bitters and orange bitters from both the Bitter Truth and the Angostura Company. And uh, there's a lot of bitters to go. But I'm looking forward to all of them. The other ones uh, include one of something else that's a little more familiar. The Bitter Truth also has celery bitters. And actually, I just remembered as my mouth keeps on jabbering and my mind forgets to slow down, that each one of these bitters has their own page in this book here. So I'm actually curious to see what the bitter truth says about their own aromatic bitters. I did not read this first, just to be just to be clear. Mostly because I completely forgot to. I probably should have, but I didn't. So the aromatic bitters, according to the bitter truth themselves, are the most classic of all the bitters going back to the 18th century. Five, by far the most widely used in the Manhattan cocktail or old fashioned. We see that they are unsurpassed in the complexity of flavor with spices such as cinnamon, cardamom, anise, permeate, they, they permeate prominently, and the aroma is full of clove and heady with gingerbread combined with more subtle tutti fruity notes. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But they're celery bitters. If I've turned to the right page, everybody got the celery bitters, you got tonic bitters, you got celery bitters, are, lo and behold, celery. They've got hints of, actually wait, why am I reading that? I should see, I should do this very unbiasedly. Let's see if I can pick out what these things are. I did see a little bit of them. I saw tea as one of the options, like Centra green tea. Um, the only experience I had with Centra green tea was a single packet of tea on a ship that I rode for a performance my father was doing once upon a time. We were on the boat for like a week. It was awesome. And uh, I just kept on going. I kept on going back to the Centra tea packet because I was like, I don't like this, but I also kind of do. I can't tell whether I I would want to keep with this or not, and I have, have yet to go back to uh, I'm able to try Sencha bitters beyond that. So, this is what we have so far. I'm going to give it a quick sniff. Oh, yeah. This is almost like, so I was just up for Memorial Day weekend, uh, hanging out in Vermont uh, with my family. We were doing a little housewarming up there. It was pretty fun. And um, we, it's buggy up there. So we decided to get some citronella candles or tea tree oil candles. This smells like citronella, like a little bit. It's like that. It's like that lemony tea note. And I know the book said lemongrass and centra green tea, but this is this is different than that. I promise you. It also barely has a hue to it. It's like slightly clear, and perhaps otherwise. But that is really that's that's nice smelling. It is like, it is almost like a lightly burning citronella candle with those more like, like lemon forward notes, almost like, like a lemon custard or like a lemon pound cake, as opposed to just a straight lemon itself. It's like lemon with a little sugar and cream in it. It's 
And as I taste this, <laughs> it does remind me of celery. <laughs> this is kind of like the taste of celery when you like, like if you crack celery, it has a particular smell to it, but it's more complex than that. It's a little, it's definitely of the bitters from the bitter truth so far, this is the least bitter of the bunch. The most bitter was definitely the orange bitters, and that must be like a bitter orange, bitter orange kind of bitters. But this is like very, very clean. It's very bright. It's very lemon note. It's very celery note. It's very, it's like, it's cooling, almost like a mint would be, but it's cooling in the same way that like, you know, when you eat celery, I feel like it cleans you, it kind of clears you up. It, uh, it cools you off a little bit. It hydrates you. And those are the notes that I'm getting off of the celery bitters which is very, very nice. Lyco says, I gotta bounce, dude. Gotta get some food. You get on out of there and bounce, my guy. Fill yourself up. Get food in your belly. I had two whole pieces of, it was like a cheese lasagna earlier, and it was wonderful. And my body is currently refluxing from it, but you didn't need to know that, and you didn't ask, but I decided to share anyway. That's nice. I'd say, like, this is, this is almost... Lemonade. Yeah. This is almost kind of like this is almost kind of like a very not so sweet lemonade. It's kind of like if you stripped away all of the sweetness of a brisk iced tea. That's kind of what the, like these bitters taste like combined with water and also celery. Don't let me forget about the celery. That is actually kind of interesting. But I will find what we got with the celery bitters. I want to see what they say about their own bitters, because that'd be pretty cool to do a little comparison like that, because that's awesome. Where are you? I can't find you. Tonic bitters. That's the one. Nope. Celery. Hmm. They have a rich bouquet flavors of white grape, sencha tea, lemongrass, celery leaf, and fresh ginger root. I most definitely get those ginger newts now. That didn't that didn't dawn on me, but you know what? Ginger tea, ever so in the slightest, or like not 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 necessarily like fresh ginger root, but like ginger powder. I didn't even think about that. Detail. That really didn't click because like ginger to me has a more spiciness to it, like it kind of burns your tongue a bit. And I wasn't getting any burn, so I don't think my mind was going toward the ginger. But now that they say that, I can see it. I can see that. Like adding ginger powder to your brisk iced tea and ripping away all the all the sweetness from it. Tasty. Tasty celery bitters. A little bit of water in there to get the flavors out. A lot of different flavors existing. I'm going into my mouth right now. It's a little I feel like Like you ever get the sensation where you put a lot of different fla you get a lot of different flavors. And like your your mouth is just like, yo, dude, what are you doing? It's a lot going on there. Uh, that's what I'm getting. But like, it's it's positive, or maybe not. Could be reactionary. Not really sure. But it's fun because tasting things is fun. The other set of bitters that I have from the Bitter Truth are Creole bitters, as well as Jerry Thomas's own Decanter bitters. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know too much about any of those, so I'm gonna go straight to the book on this one to see what it has to say. I'm aware I've seen. Creole bitters used in the world, you, sometimes alongside like mole bitters. But let's let the let's let the the book tell me what's up. Creole bitters, a kitchen kitchen spice type of aromatic bitters. These guys in particular, Creole equals flavorful, and these bitters are as unique as the culture it encapsulates. They smell like a kitchen in the French Quarter. They are reminiscent of a style of bitters dating back to the area before cocktails even existed, back when bitters were made by doctors and apothecaries, primarily for the use in liquid tonics and eventually as an ingredient for alcoholic beverages years later. They reflect a Creole way of life with its beautiful complexity and spiciness, uh, with notes that we will get through eventually. The um, And they were talking about a metallic label on the bottom, a vintage metallic label, as opposed to well, I guess they do kind of have a little metallicness to it. Oh, I'll show you guys that when we go to the other angle. That's interesting. Try it in a Manhattan or an old fi old fashioned or a French 75 or any drink that is worth perking up, according to the book. I'm gonna leave my phone in there ah! and almost drop it off the bar because I'm silly like that. To see, uh, <laughs> we'll get. To, I'll read the notes on the cream bitters later. But apparently, spicy kitchen, French Quarter. 
Vibrant. I like that. Let's see. Let's give it a switch. It looks like this is going to stain the glass red a little bit. Yeah, it's mighty red. I think it's going to turn pink. Also, not sure if y'all can see the fact that this uh this kind of uh this bottle here is kind of like it does have a little bit of a glistening to it. I don't know if the photo is like specifically focusing. It does kind of glisten. That's kind of cool. And I give that a smell. Hmm. Oh, there's something else that oh that's uh, that's like licorice-y. But it's like, it's like a cherry licorice. It's like a, um, I got like sourdough. It's almost like, like a licorice sourdough is what the smell I was getting. Also, look how pink it is. Because it was red. And I can't tell with my hands in the way. Well, it's pink. And I like the way that looks. And like, that smelled really good. It's almost like, it's almost like a, um, like, um, the way like a hot a bag of hot tamales smells like a candy like almost a candy shop <sniffs> mm. like slightly dry i'm definitely getting those like any like licorice notes to it because there is as opposed to like the other bitters that i've had so far this one like noticeably leaves my mouth feeling a little dry and exactly which spice or botanical that's coming from, I'm not exactly sure. But it's got a certain, like, uh, it's got a certain, like, I wish I had a better way of, ref like, referring to a licorice flavor. Like, because I find that licorice and fennel and uh, anise all occupy a very similar space in my mouth. And they all, like, they're all distinct, but they're all a part of, like, the same family of flavors that I just don't have a word to describe yet. But that's what I'm experiencing. It's almost, it's almost like it took a little bit. Of, it's almost like I say like licorice as if I like the candy. There's a certain like mm, to it. But I feel not like dwelling on that a little bit. That's nice and pleasant. It's definitely like a little less. It's less spice forward in terms of it's definitely it doesn't feel very cinnamony doesn't feel very clovey doesn't feel very all spicy it's not like those sort of like what i'm gonna just gonna call for lack of a better term christmas spices they t seem almost like like other spices that you would find in other let's say the less seasonal times of the kitchen like when i had a certain note of like sourdough there there's, it's almost like a rye component there something that's a little more wheated something that you would put into bread or to make bread out of. The first thing that came to mind is I've said sourdough a number of times now. I don't exactly know what they put in sourdough. Never made bread on my own. But if there's a particular like, like base that they use in sourdough, that people use in sourdough, at least the ones that I've had, this is very reminiscent of that. And also rye bread. I like the smell of that. I actually just had a rye bread sandwich yesterday. It was very, very tasty because I love rye bread. According to the bitter truth, the notes are a little, uh, Cayenne, pink peppercorn, big red cinnamon, dusky caraway, and fennel seed. Fruit scents of dried apricots, cherries, and cranberries are mingling with the strong flavors of anise, smoked paprika, and hints of smoldering pine wood. That note of it being a little smoky was something I think like as my as my mouth was continuing to process the flavors as I was continuing to speak and just spit all this garbage out to the camera for y'all i was getting something that was a little smoky and like before my eyes read it on the page i like felt it although i didn't have the word for it so i'm gonna take absolutely no credit for that except to say i agree it is a touch smoky but like a savory sort of smoky as opposed to it being like propane torch smoky I suppose. Or like burning oil on your stove smoky. Not that kind of smoky. Not like smoky the bear smoky, which I guess would be more like fur and animalistic. What an interesting thought. Fill up a little bit more on water over here. And the other bitter truth bitters that I've got is this Jerry Thomas bitters. Jerry Thomas. I'm not a historian, but I know he was a pretty cool guy, especially in the cocktail world. So I'm going to let the book do the explaining for me. Tell me more about Jerry Thomas book. I say as if to command it for me. Piece of parchment. Tell me what you do. 
a 19th century style aromatic bitters. It's Jerry Thomas's own decanter bitters based on a recipe by Professor Jerry Thomas, who was the most considered the most important bartender of the 19th century. We're not sure if we he would know what cider candy smell like. Since we don't know if they exist in the 1860s, he might recognize, however, uh, certain notes of stuff that we're going to experience here. The homage is character, characterful, characterful, as its namesake was, so join in, get experimental, and doff your hat to the man who brought us the first ever published cocktail book, Jerry Thomas, formerly the principal bartender at the Metropolitan Hotel in New York, and the Planter's House in St. Louis. St. Louis? St. Louis? Saint, Saint, Saint Louis. I was saying that. It's interesting. I saw I saw one thing there, and that was candy ginger, and whatever they call, there was a word of was it candy cider candies. Don't know what is uh, Alexa, volume eight. Alexa, what is a cider candy? From PracticalSelfReliance.com, the process for canning boiled cider is the same as canning maple syrup, and it's not technically canning in the true sense of the word. Alexa, what is cider candy? From NewRecipes.com, these chewy treats are like caramel apples in candy form, hmm. combining the tangy sweet flavor of cider with buttery caramel. If you're ever looking for cooking inspiration, just ask me to find recipes. No. Okay. So apparently, you can make it. Can cider candy is like candy made from, you guessed it, cider. Exactly what kind of cider? Not so sure. I want to believe that it's kind of like apple cider vinegar, for instance, or just apple cider. I don't know why I went all like, like... For harming on myself i say that in the sense of <laughs> it's more medicinal maybe we want like a medicinal candy i'd be curious to see what like a sweetened like candied apple cider vinegar thing tastes like i'm i'm explorative i like to explore things so jerry thomas's bitters very prolific bartender first cocktail book apparently which cocktail books i can't tell off the top of my head but like come back to here in like a year and we'll see how much i've learned from there um, dashing. I'm dashing. Dashing in my cocktail glass. Something about that seems kind of weird to say. Smells like cleaning product. With a little hint of like... Oh, I know what that is, but what is it? Oh, it's reminding me of the Nocino again, but I can't remember exactly which one it is. It's a, it's a, it's like a cinnamon. It's not, maybe it's not cinnamon. It almost also kind of smells like cleaning product. There is, so it's cinnamony, right? So I'm just going to say it's like one of the Christmas spices. This kind of smells like a, like specifically air freshener that is labeled just holiday or just Christmas. Like if you were to market to me, an air freshener, an aerosol specifically, that just said Christmas. I would think it could smell like that. In any case, let's see what color it is. It looks kind of dark so far. I fill it up with a little bit of water. It's got a yellowiness to it. Ye yellow yellowiness. Yellowiness. A yellowiness is what it is. And uh, that's, it's cool. It's cool. It's a nice color. I'm just kind of going back and forth with that. I just want to let you know what I see. It's yellowy. There's that Christmassy smell again. However the way that you're marketing it. Hmm. Kind of light on flavor. It's not as prominently piquanty. Not as prominently like cinnamon clove. I think maybe a little bit more on the allspice this, this time. But it's like, it's kind of smooth. It's not a very like, like prominently flavored bitters. It feels like it's kind of like almost Angostura-y in the sense that it's baking spicy, but it's also a little more fruity. It's got notes of like, like citrus skin. Or, or like, or I mean, not even citrus, not like citrusy zest or citrus oil, but also like, like stone fruit skin, like almost like, like taking a bite into a peach, but never quite getting to the flesh or taking a bite of like, like a pear, but never quite getting to like the meat on the inside of the skin. 
is like the impression I'm getting there. It's a little, it's a little more on the notes of like baking spice ish, but things that are a little more like down to earth, either the skin of a fruit or something that's more ruby. Almost, maybe, maybe not, not really gingery to me, but like almost like the non spicy parts of like wasabi, if that makes any sense at all. I know mo for the most part, wasabi is just hot and green, but there's like, a vegetal note that I'm also kind of getting. Also, potatoes came to mind, but but there's no need to look into that a little bit more. Potatoes are just potatoes occupy a very special part of my brain. Evidently, crystallized ginger and the oils of fresh tangerine and almonds seep through the flavor for Jerry Thomas's decanter bitters. We're sure that he would have known that it tastes of dried fruit with a finish of orange peel and a light sprinkling of Angostura bark. Of course, the original recipe was not slavishly pre-produced, but its formula was improved to comply with today's legal requirements and discerning taste demands. So those notes of like the Angostura. I was almost kind of like... I almost felt bad about that tasting note for a second. I was like, this is very similar to Angostura. Why? Because Angostura bark, as opposed to, maybe not the Angostura bitters themselves, but uh, it's, Alexa, is Angostura a type of tree? From EOL.org, Angostura trifoliata. Angostura is a species of tree in the family Lutaceae. Alexa, thank you. You're right. You're so welcome. <laughs> very much Your so. This really gives me a charge. Hope you had a good Wednesday. Oh, the Wednesdays are great so far. Thank you. Thank you very much. I almost felt bad about that observation for a moment. I was like, ah, this feels very Angostura-y. Uh, but it is very angostura -y. It literally says it right in the book. If we were to score my tasting notes this evening, uh, I'd say just as we did on that one trivia episode, I am very lacking. <laughs> I'm not passing by any standards. But you know what? We're having a good time with it. We've made it through. Let's see. Seven different types of bitters so far. Uh, which encompasses what else do we have remaining? I'm gonna remove all the things that I haven't tasted yet over here. We're like Almost halfway through Maybe 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 We'll get to it Ooh. What else have we got over here? We're about at the hour mark so far I'm realizing that I prepared a couple of cocktails this evening, but based off of the way that we're going so far I don't even know if we're gonna get to a lot of cocktails but you know what? We'll take it as far as it goes. There are some of these, I think what I'll do is I'm gonna prioritize making cocktails with the bitters that I am the most curious about, which I think for the most part are actually bitters that we haven't even gotten to yet. Like Jerry Thomas, a bitters specifically for this individual seems kind of interesting. Same thing with words that I don't quite recognize like Creole, but there are some things that I do recognize in such a way. And I'm curious about how you would be able to use them. And we'll get to those a little bit later. I'm gonna keep things a little bit tamer for now as we move into the other side of the table. I think if we're talking about bitters that are a little more widespread, like for example, your orange or your Angostura's or your aromatics and whatever, then another one that pops up is Pichon's bitters. I'm gonna pop into that for a little bit. I'm done with the bitter truth. I'm done. The truth, the truth, the whole bitter truth is behind us now. Unless we go back to the book for cocktail recipes, which you know what, we very well might. It's a thing that happens. This one is Pichards. Pich P Pichards. If anybody has a correction on how I'm supposed to be pronouncing that. I am always a fan of swift corrections. You may hear me very often saying, please correct me. It's not because, you know, it's not because I doubt myself. I mean, I do doubt myself, but it's also because I'm lazy and I want you to do the work for me. Obviously, he says mildly sarcastically. So Pichards bitters shows up in such cocktails such as the Sazerac and the Sazerac. I feel like I don't see Peshad's being used pretty much anywhere except for a Sazerac. However, there are other cocktails, at least that I have in my recipe book that calls Peshad's, namely um, uh, one from a geeky bartender book called Koozie, one called Fox Hunt, a Rob Roy apparently claims to use it, Swanky Panky, the Thirsty Monk. These all apparently use Peshad's bitters, or at least uh, when I look up peach, peach, P-E-Y-C-H in my cocktail book. Those are the things that come up. But what even is a Pajad's bitters? Really though, I'm curious. So we're gonna take it back to the internet again. I'm gonna go back to my Google search and see if I can find the Pajad's bitters website if they have that. If they've got a story, might as well get it from the source, you know? 
<laughs> Search instead for Bashar. I totally butchered that. I see Amazon. I see there's a Wikipedia page. So I'm going to go for the Wikipedia page. Hello. Can't read that. Hi there. Now I can read that. Peshad's Bitters is a bitters distributed by the American Sazerac Company. No kidding. And it was originally created between 1849 and 1857 by Antoine Amade Peshad, a Creole apothecary from the French colony of St. Domingue, now Haiti, who traveled to New Orleans, Louisiana around 1793. It is a gentian based liqueur bitters. Interesting. Comparable to Angostura, but with a predominant anise aroma combined with a background of mint. Interesting. So what we see there, according to a Wikipedia page, which is of course the all the the, penult, the ultimate source of human knowledge, is anise, mint, and gentian. Uh, I will say I don't really have any knowledge on gentian. I actually, uh, as I've been doing research recently, I know that there are a number of gentian-based liqueurs out there. Namely, there was one that I came across, and I cannot for the life of me remember what that gentian-based liqueur was, but it might dawn upon me eventually. But I was like, I don't even know what a gentian is. It's a type of root. It can be bitter, medicinal in a way. Um, I imagine it tastes very rooty. But what's interesting about the description that I just read is I've tried to, like, I've tasted Peshad's in my own time, and I have had a number of different flavor experiences with this particular bottle of bitters. The first time I gave it a smell, I was like, this smells like dog. Smells like dog food. I'm getting no other notes aside from dog sticking its face into a bowl of brown nubules. And I was like, how do people want to drink these? Then, a little bit later, I had my first Sazerac, and I was like, I don't know how anybody could possibly like these. Flash forward a couple of years later, I make my own, after starting my own mixological journey and make my own Sazerac, I'm like, okay, this is all right. And the last time I tried some Peshads, which was a few streams ago, and I had these more like fruity notes. It was kind of Angostura, a little, little kitchen spicy, but also a lot more on those notes of citrus, like almost grapefruit on the nose or citrusy fruits. I don't recall gentian because i can't recall gentian i can't recall anise at least not at the top of my head and i can't quite recall mint either but now that my brain is focused on those flavors i'm very curious to see whether or not i'm gonna get those notes this time and if i am then evidently i can add to the list of things that i think Peshad's tastes like um these three particular flavors so <laughs> i'm insanely curious about it so let's see our Peshad's is a nice red color i think these i think these dashes are going to be fat ones Yep, pretty fat. Okay, that's on my bar. Yep, I tried my best. It's also staining my fingernails. There we go. It's on my fi Wow, that is burning my f fingers. Wow. Oh my goodness gracious. Anyway, what does it smell like? All right, well. Um, it's still kind of dog foody. I'm gonna be honest there. There's like a savoriness that I'm smelling now. Almost like, like meat, but like uncooked meat in a good way. I like my steaks more on the rare, on the rare side. So, but I'm gonna do this the way that I've been doing it. It's gonna come out a nice pink color. I think those were pretty fat dashes there, so I'm not exactly surprised. Um, let's see, what do we have? I'm really trying to find those notes of anise, mint, or gentian. And like, there is a certain, like, savory earthiness that I can't quite put my finger on. And because gentian is the only flavor that I see in this description that I don't quite recognize on my own flavor palette, I want to say that that's the gentian that I'm tasting. I don't know though. I'm still getting those notes of something a little almost like cherry. -y. When I say cherry, I mean like Kirschwasser, like almost like a cherry brandy type taste to it. Not quite maraschino, not quite as like like airy and me almost mentally like a maraschino liqueur would be or like mint would be. I'm really not getting much mint there, but there's a bunch of different types of mints, right? And I think if I had to pick any part of the, this that was more minty, it's like biting into a mint leaf. Not mint as it 
appears in creme de menthe or or like breath mints like spearmint peppermint bubble mint you name it it's not that type of mint it's like the stem of a plant i would even go so far as to say instead of mint being a flavor here it's almost basil-y in the sense that it's like it's basil to me is kind of it's almost cinnamony but it's not cinnamon it's almost minty but it's not mint it's almost as if it's some interesting place in between so i would say instead of let's say let, let's just say it's gentian because i don't have a proper way to describe gentian never had it before um instead of mint i'd go basil and instead of anise i'd say like i guess instead of that spice i would just maintain with the basil and i'd say that there's still some like almost like citrusy notes in there that is interesting it's interesting to think like i'll take this moment to kind of just like summarize like how it feels to be a mixologist in the very very early early parts of their mixing journey it's very interesting to find that there are things out there bottles that are in your collection that you think one thing and you leave it for a little bit and maybe it's the time that it spends on the shelf. Maybe it's the time it spends like ever so slightly in the sunlight as you're trying to make a drink with it, or you're trying to go, you're, you're trying to like, like see how it works in cocktails and you come back to it and it changes ever so slightly. And like, it's possible that the Peshad's bitters in this case, which has been sitting below my bar out of the sunlight for quite a few months now, might have changed its flavors a little bit, but in a more optimistic note, I feel like I'm going to say that it's the interpretation of the flavors that are already there that seem to be changing not only based off of like growing of all growing of the scent system, the olfactory and tasting system, but also just like an awareness of the context that flavors can exist in and a, like familiarity as you become more like more well versed in, oh, this tastes like that. But that I didn't experience until just a year ago. Or this tastes like that, and I experienced that when I was a little kid, and it's finally coming back up in a completely different way now. It's cool, and it's exciting. Which is why I continue to do this, because it's fun. Bishad's Bitters. I hate you, but I also love you, I guess. Sazerac. <laughs> Sazerac Company, ladies and gentlemen, and those who fall in between. Pishad's Bitters! Nice job! You did it! You've astounded me for yet again the third time. Mr. Pichod keeps on coming back in various different ways, surprising me every single time, making me yet again go back to my drawing board and thinking, huh. A little bit of water to cleanse the palate a bit and move on. So that's the only type of Pichod... <laughs> Pichaud's bitters that I have here. I don't know if Pichaud's makes anymore. Are there other bitters from the Pichaud's company? I guess it's a Sazerac company, right? Pichaud's bitters? Are there Are there more? Are there more? No. Does not seem like there are. Pichaud's aromatic bitters. Are there others? Potentially. Maybe. Beyond the scope of this particular research exercise. Excuse me. So I'll take Pichaud's off the board. Because we're, we're done with that. Interesting to think that I can spend 15 minutes vamping on about a single tiny bottle that I only take a sip of. Some would call it impressive. Some would call it embarrassing. I take it with a great sense of pride. All right. So let's see. What are the next bitters that I want to go through? I want to save some of the cooler ones for last. So I think what I'll do this time is I'm going to take... I think... You're cool. You're cool. You're cool. You're all cool. You're like... You're probably cool. I'm gonna go to the Fee Brothers. So the next bitters that I'm gonna cover are the Fee Brothers. Fee Brothers. Is that an apostrophe? Fee Brothers? Nope. I don't see an apostrophe, so I'm not gonna do an apostrophe. So the two Fee Brothers, Fee Brothers is another like large bitters company. There's so, so many different types of Fee Brothers, um, Fee Brother, Fee Brother bitters. Uh, the most prominent ones that I'm aware of are their old fashioned bitters, as well as I just happen to keep making eye contact with like 
There might be like a lavender bitter, but I know there's definitely a rhubarb bitters. And like rhubarb was interesting because I was out when we when I had our buddy Brad on last week. We went out and got a little bit of lunch, and I found a like a. a a Danish that had rhubarb in the center of it. And the only rhubarb experience that I've had it was getting some rhubarb wine from up in Vermont and trying it and being like, wow, this is really sour. Is rhubarb really that sour? And then I tasted the rhubarb Danish and I was like, yeah, that is kind of sour. And so I'm like, maybe rhubarb bitters is sour in a way. I don't really know. I do not have rhubarb bitters. Um, the next time I find them, I should probably grab them so I can keep, I can, you know, put money where my mouth is. Uh, but the two that I have here are peach and old fashioned. Peach because Anna loves the, the flavor of peach. Anytime when it comes to, if, if it's a cocktail flavor, if she wants any sort of fruit in it, I know peach is gonna be a slam dunk. So I got myself some peach bitters, both there and I also had, oh, this is not peach, this is grapefruit, but we'll get to that. Um, so I wanted to have some peach bitters in my collection. Uh, the old fashioned ones I grabbed mostly because, um, I'm trying to look at, it's an aromatic product, that's all the back of the bottle says. Mostly because I, at the point in time when I bought this, I really didn't have much of an appreciation for an old fashioned, because I really hadn't had a good old fashioned. I had yet to find a, a combo for an old fashioned that really does it for me. I have found, since the corn in your cocktails episode, that if I'm going to do an old fashioned, I'm gonna have something that is a little less on the spice side, not necessarily a rye for me. I like things that are a little more corn based, like a Larsen and instead of using a sugar cube, I like to opt for some simple syrup because I don't really like the, the little granules of, of, of sugar in there. I like something that's a little more liquid and more, more put together. That's my particular old-fashioned fa favorites. Uh, and I don't really make that many of them, so, you know. Uh, let's see. So the history of the Fee Brothers, as I'm on their website right now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm supposed to keep you guys along the way. I forgot about that. I don't normally pull up this view. Fee Brothers... How can I misspell it this time? I did not! Yes! History! Uh, I can't read that from here, so I'm gonna make it- Wow. 12,345 generations. Oh, one, two, three, four, five generations? Oh, five generations. Oh, are you just gonna- Oh, is this just a whole- Wow. Wow. There's a lot of generations. Wow, look at all those Fee Brothers. Wow. Look at all those Fee Brothers. My goodness, what's the cliff notes? The year was 1835. That's excellent. Thank you, Brothers of Fee. That was excellent indeed. There's apparently a lot. See, whoa, excuse me. Sorry about that, madam. The point that I was making earlier about some of these spirits having an entire, like, historical background and story is a really, really amusing thing. Uh, I was under the impression that some of these would at least do us the honors of providing a little summary of us, uh, of their product and their history so that we can kind of, like, quote, um, in my words, get to the point a little quicker, because there's a lot of bitters here and I need a cocktail, so to speak. Uh, but honestly, that sort of history, if there really is a history there, that it should be celebrated. And like, I, I would encourage anybody who's really, really interested in, I guess like, even if you're not interested in the history of cocktails or the ingredients that go into those cocktails, like maybe every once in a while, like if you have a bottle that you're a big fan of, Let's say it's a thing of Angostura because you love your Manhattans or you love your Negronis so it's a bottle of Campari. Like, I would just like offer the word, just offer the challenge to see if you can find like a piece of that liquor aside from the taste that you like about it. Because I feel like there are, there is a lot to these, there's a lot of heart that goes into these things. And there's so many different bottles out there and it's hard to kind of stop and smell the roses. I think the theme here is, is um, what's the term I'm looking for? It's like when you're aware of your surroundings in a particular point of view. Me not, not mental, mm, the word is mindfulness. That is the term, mindfulness. If you practice mindfulness in your cocktails, you'll come to find that there's a lot of humans in these bottles. Sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. But there are five generations of Fee Brothers and it all started back in the 1800s. And I think that's enough for me to start doing some notes on these guys. I am very curious about the peach bitters, mostly because I'm wondering if it's just peach or if there's a little bit more there. I don't really know. So, this bottle is a... Hmm. This bottle is a little... Uh, it's interesting to think that like all these bottles are different too. Exactly how much you get in the dash varies wildly. Wow! Ooh. 
It's like candied peaches. That's like peach candy. That's what that smells like. It's like peach candy. There's no other way around that. Wow. Did you catch the color? It's like yellowish. It smells like peach candies from a candy store. You know, like those little peach rings? Wait, do I have any peach rings? I might have peach rings. Uh, uh, hold for a moment while I check my closet. I'm pretty sure I have peach rings. I'm so sure that I got peach rings. Oh yeah, I do! Oh wait, those are not peach rings. Those are strawberry rings. Oh, all right. Well, as I come back mildly defeated, evidently I don't have peach rings, but like, I have strawberry rings. Strawberry rings smell and taste like strawberry. They are pink on one side and red on the other. Peach rings, on the other hand, taste like peaches, or as peaches can taste if there's a shit ton of sugar just like shoved into it. Um, and it's yellow on one side, and I think like orange or pink on the other side. Uh, but this smells like those peach rings. They smell so, it smells so good. Wow, that's a delightful smell. My goodness. That's so good. I had to take a moment to really appreciate that for a second. That's just, this just tastes like peach. I don't even know how you can call something like this bitter. It's not bitter at all. It's sweet. This is almost like, like, almost as if it was a peach brandy, but it's, it's, it's got a little bit of sugar in it. Like, that's delightful. Wow. That's so good. Use a dash or two of Fee's Peach Bitters to add an interesting background flavor to your cocktail. This is delightful. What's, the, what's in this thing? Water, water, glycerin, sugar, peach flavor, AKA water, propylene glycol, alcohol and flavor. Propylene glycol's in this. And of course, caramel color, natural and artificial bitter almond oil. Oh, almond oil contains almonds. Actually, I'm. you know what? I read almonds and I started to taste the almond just a little bit. There's like a little amaretto note there. Just a little bit. But like mostly peach and mostly sweet. And uh, propylene glycol is known for being sweet. It's the stuff that I think that goes in like, uh, 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 um, what's the thing? It's blue and it cleans your car windows. Washer fluid or otherwise. I want to say it was propylene glycol that got the entire country of Austria in trouble once upon a time. In any case, that's delightful. How does that work? How does what work? Oh, I have a live audience member. Hi, dearest. She just popped up. What's going on? Yeah. Yeah, what's up? Are you just tasting bitters? Just I mean, so far, the plan was to taste all the bitters and then do some cocktails. However, we're an hour and a half in, and I am just about halfway through, I'm just about halfway through the bitters. So oh the whole God. sampling of bitters, that just might be the entire thing. Maybe that's we'll do bitters fun. cocktail another time. That's Pichaud's bitter. Pichaud. That is going to have, according to Wikipedia, notes of mint and anise and uh, gentian. One. Which one? That one. You want to try Pashad's bitters? Did you have it already? Yes, I re don't really think. don't think you want to try that one. Okay, I want. I, I think you should try the peach bitters. I was just talking about how much you love peach. I want peach. You want to try the peach bitters? Where Go for it. It's in, it's in the glass. This oh. whole thing. Well, it's got water in it too. Oh. I'm tasting things my way. Next time on Sampling Bitter is exactly what we did today, except we're mixing it all with tonic water. And then next time on Sampling Bitters, the same thing, but we're just bastardizing everything with Coca-Cola. So it kind of tastes like, like a really- so Do you wanna, you do you wanna come back here and describe that to the crowd? Sorry, where, can they hear me? Yeah, they can hear you. Okay. Um, so it kind of tastes like, you know those medicines that they poorly like, Flavor. Yes, like like the medicine, like the uh, cough medicine that you get. That's just like it's like cherry or like grape or like. No, like peach. This, is, this is like one of those messed up versions where they're like it's peach medicine. I'm like, no, and you're like, and you're not. like, is it though? That's bad. You're also tasting it very watered down, which I guess like really though, this is the kind of flavor that. You, so think of it this way, you're only gonna put usually only a few dashes, if that at all, of bitters into your cocktails. So. Effectively, this is the flavor addition that you're adding. Assuming that your water really isn't flavored, my water is not a very neutral flavor water, so is technically Wait, some mixing going on water? here. You, How do I get that? Like distilled water. Isn't that it's got no minerals and stuff. This is not distilled. Distilled is like filtered. you built you you like boil it and then like reconstitute it in another container. So this is filtered. It's carbon filtered. Well, I mean, we could be, like water. you'd have to find a way to like you know the water that. I think put it this way. If you want distilled water, the best thing that you can do 
I guess, it, with our current situation, is boil the water, don't pour any of it out. Instead, take the top of the kettle that you were boiling in and let the I water that sits you. on it to like go down. Okay, well, maybe there is some stuff in the beautiful okay, book, but there might be something about distilled water in there. Where's my like, side Can I take a look at the book? It's gonna be in the glossary, which may be in the back of the book. Whoa, okay. Oh, wow. I shut it really fast. Oh, wow. I got spooked for a moment there. Sorry, guys. Today's derailment brought to you by my future wife. Let's see, we have here. So let's see, let's see where we go. Let me open this book up here. We've got the beauty of, you know this guy, you know him well, it's Dave Arnold. I knew it well, that's why I looked at the cover, just to confirm. AKA cooking issues. Does it have stuff on, wait, what? Well, it's it's distilled water. Oh, distilled water. Distilled water, distilled water. Do we have anything on distilled water? Hmm. Is he the guy that got the whole like, hmm. thingy to do that sets up and like whooshes and stuff? There is a bunch of chapters on distillation of coffee, of gin, and vacuum distillation. Not specifically of water. Page 331. Everyone turn to page 331 of Liquid Intelligence. No laughing. <laughs> Education is not funny. Education is hilarious. Education is not funny. Do not, do not make me utilize the dowel of discipline. Do you want a pointer finger thingy? No, I have a dowel of discipline. I am totally getting you a pointer finger. I have a dowel of discipline. Pointer. There is no need to improve upon this. <laughs> you got aggressive, guys. 331. I don't see anything about a vacuum here. Oh, yes, I do. Hey, -o. techno variant. Quoting from a book by Dave Arnold, Liquid Intelligence, for the purposes of education. If you have something to say about that, keep your mouth shut. That's not how that works. My other favorite clarified grape juice recipe is habanero and juice. The recipe is the same, except instead of gin, you use redistilled habanero vodka. Blend 200 grams of red habanero peppers with a liter of 40 proof vodka and distill it till you recover 650 milliliters of product in a rotary evaporator with a condenser temperature of negative 20 degrees Celsius, any bath temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. The habaneros must be... Why are we talking about habaneros? I must recheck the... Dis I must recheck the index. Distillation, 331. 331. 331. bottom? No. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I didn't get there. I didn't get there yet. <clears throat> the habaneros must be red for the drink to work. Habaneros are one of the hottest peppers known, but also have a fantastic flavor and aroma. Capsaicin, the compound responsible for the spiciness of the pepper, is too heavy to distill, so none of the heat is present in the distillate. Roto habanero is one of my long-standing and favorite distillations, my meaning from the perspective of Dade Arnold, and it goes amazingly well with grapefruit. If you make it, be aware that the distillate has a short shelf life. After a month or so, the red flavor of the distillate will fade, and it will begin to taste green, more like a jalapeno, a.k.a. jalapeno. It's got the little enye. Um, left. Habanero gin being vacuum distilled at low temperature. It's a picture. That's hilarious. Okay, so I have a question. Okay, I have an How answer. How do you taste green versus red? How do you taste green versus red? You just said it would taste green. Okay, so when I think of the color red, I think of hot, cherry, flavor forward. I think of fruity. iron, bloody, and gross. When I think of green, I think of leaves. I think of mint, grass, and or pine. And trees. Grass, freshly mowed grass. I don't like that smell. Like the like the like the heads of the students, freshly mowed with inspiration and education. Okay, so I'm done derailing. How many more bitters you got? We got plenty more bitters left, actually. Okay, okay. I got you. Thank you, my love. I'm being interested. I want to call these segments distractions via Anna. I think derailments with an X. Where does the X go? Right in the middle. Derailment. Yeah, you, right you, you pronounced it correctly. Yeah. The X is silent. <laughs> you got it. You're not funny. I'm not? Only a little. Well, you gotta pick one side or the other. In any case, peach. As in, life is a peach. It tastes like peach. It's very, very peach forward. And there was also that, um, oh, what was the other thing? There was something else about it. I've forgotten already. Rewind the video. It's probably important. Maybe not. All right. So now we tried the Fee Brothers Peach Bitters, which from my point of view, kind of tasted exactly like those peach little candies. I don't exactly know what the brand is, but it's actually very tasty. And there was also a piece of like, um, I, there was something else in there and I cannot remember what it was, but it's okay. Maybe it'll come back to me.
In any case, now we have the old-fashioned bitters over here. Old fashions are cocktails that utilize some type of whiskey base. You got a little sugar in there, got a little bit of bitters in there, and maybe you express a peel, or maybe you muddle it at the bottom. It's really, there is a, this is a hotly debated topic, evidently. Whether you muddle a fruit, or whether you just express the fruit, or whether you use a solid sugar cube, whether you use granules of sugar cubes, like little tiny grains of that, or whether you use simple syrup. There's so many ways to old fashion. Or, at least what I'm being led to believe by this bottle, I am too. Add a dash or two to add a savory zest to a huge variety of drinks and foods. A highly aromatic product blended from the finest ingredients from around the world. How very nondescript and vague. Hopefully it's delicious. We shall see. So our old-fashioned bitters. Do they taste like old-fashioned? Do they, do they go well in old-fashioned? Probably. I don't really know. Let's see if this bitters bottle plays nice with me. Yeah, actually, that was pretty good. This is a nice dark red color to it. This is like, it looks like the Angostura, and it smells like, ooh, gingerbread. Yeah. It smells like gingerbread. It's like a gingerbread house. Seriously, though, I am not even joking on that. That is like straight up like, it's like freshly made gingerbread or like, um, wow. It's the other, it's like, <laughs> it's like walking into a Yankee candle store also around the, uh, the holiday season except it's not quite just gingerbread either it's like gingerbread and like like a very bright notes of like like a like savory citrus if that makes any sense whatsoever that's awesome and look at the beautiful color this is like a really cool looking color it kind of looks like some cocktails i've made specifically at negroni's or old fashions or manhattan's Ooh, wow Wow, this, from what Anna was describing about like certain, certain medicines, especially the ones like made for kids that have a certain flavor like added to them, like it doing a bad job at imitating the flavor that it says on the bottle. This reminds me of a medicine that I used to take when I was younger and I'm trying to figure out what it is. It's got notes of like, like medicinal cherry. It's bitter. This actually tastes bitter. And it's offering this, this flavor that is very, very, oh gosh, it just reminds me of like, like gingerbread, really. It's like the, the part of gingerbread that's more savory, I think. It's really, really good. But it's also kind of citrusy and it's also kind of cherry-y, but it's, it's got a more fruit flavor, fruit forward component to it um, with also that bit of like savoriness. And by savoriness, what I mean here is like, it's almost like the flavor quadrant that you would get from like a barbecue sauce like this i i can totally imagine adding a little bit of old fat or even a lot of bit of old-fashioned bitters to like a steak marinade or just add it to some you know your favorite barbecue sauce already maybe even add it to a little bit of tabasco i feel like this i've never made myself a bloody mary before but if i was going to make my own bloody mary mix i'd probably throw a bottle of this in there this is cool it's very very nice and it's got a bunch of shit in it. Got some, oh, it's artificial red and yellow food dye, which is, you know, some people say that the red dye actually has a flavor too. Anna, Anna would claim that red 40 has a flavor. I believe her. Sometimes the red drinks just taste red. I guess going back to the point that was being made before, how do you describe the taste of red or green? Well, apparently red has its own flavor, or at least in some context it does. In the context of the Fee Brothers Old Fashioned Bitters, Old Fashioned Aromatic Bitters, we have indeed cracked the code on that one. That's really cool. I feel like of all the bitters we have so far, the ones that would make like the most, like that would be the most noticeable in a drink would be these old fashioned bitters, your Angostura bitters, and probably like those, um, those orange, those, those, um, bitter truth orange bitters because they like they were so, that bitterness was like very prominent like completely shot through the water despite how much dilution i had added to it so if you're looking for something that is like like add some baking spicy notes so far i would say like an angostura aromatic if you were looking for something that adds more savory almost like barbecue notes to it but like a little more on the fruitier side a little more complex these fee brothers old-fashioned aromatic bitters are great for that something that's like it, it like it pushes forward that bitter orangeness, especially with the emphasis on the bitter. I go for the bitterman so far. 
this is kind of cool. This was this is nice because like I'll, I'll admit, out of pure selfish interest, I wanted to know um, how I, I needed to find an excuse to uh, try all these bitters and stuff. And so why not on a Wednesday night where we get to spend some time together to be able to uh, explore the world in in such a way, uh, explore the world by way through its bitters. And um, obviously, if I <laughs> I don't plan on stopping getting bitters whenever I can find them. So I'm going to try my best to continue to get more and maybe do another sampling thing. I don't know. Depends. If this kind of content is appealing to you, feedback is always appreciated, but never, you are never under any obligation to do so. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself. And I will do the same, except instead of sitting back and relaxing, I'm going to stand up, bounce around a little bit, and not quite relax, but exude my energy in a constructive way it's all about exuding your energy in a constructive way power unlimited power so i say so now that we're done with that i'm going to move on to i have a single thing of bitters from the bitter housewife the bitter housewife also is a company that makes a number of bitters i only have i only have one for the bitter housewife and it is their grapefruit bitters. And I only got the grapefruit bitters because I think there was a cocktail I tried to make one time that specifically called for it. And so I was like, well, this looks like it's easy enough to get my hands on. And it was, it was pretty easy. Um, but they do a number of other bitters too. And in a moment, I will do a little search. We'll pull up the, uh, we'll pull up the screen again so that we can give, give credit where credit is due for that bitter housewife. Because as they say, bitter. Housewife. There we go. I tried to write that properly. But uh, you know, even even the bitterest of souls can sometimes be made to smile with perhaps giving a smile of your own or maybe pass it, doing a little, being a little genuine to somebody, you know, pass them a drink along the bar like, I've got that guy's drink or I got that gal's drink and uh, hopefully it doesn't come across as creepy. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes when you're just trying to be a nice person, it comes across as creepy and that's okay because whatever your reason for being a good person today is, as long as you're not like hurting people, I think it's probably okay. Rounds on me tonight, everybody. Here you go. Here you go. So the bitter housewife, let me, I opened up the container and now, no, 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 not the phone. Not the phone. That's what you have this for. This for. It's over there on that side. Hello, fifth generation of Fee Brothers. Bitter housewife. Hopefully that comes across as, okay, the bitter housewife. Great. Not like me trying to Google like images of like housewives that happen to be bitter for some reason. Hello. Be bitterly honest. Uh, okay. What does that say on the top? I can't see. Hello, hamburger menu. What does you say? Wow, cocktail bitters. I'm interested in your cocktail bitters. Bitters and soda, great idea. Absolutely great idea. Look at all those bitters there. I can't read a single one of them. Small batch, real ingredients, great taste. Cocktail bitters are the spice rack of cocktail making. Excuse me a moment. <clears throat> totally on me, it's from the lasagna earlier. With the ability to heighten certain flavors in spirits and mixers while also softening others, they have the power to bring disparate flavors into harmony. Use them generously in cocktails in place of extracts like vanilla and baking and so much more. Learn more about cocktail bitters through our blog and try your hand at some cocktail recipes we've developed just for you. Do you have any cocktail recipes for your grapefruit bitters? Hello, other tab. Recipes. A vermouth spritz featuring orange bitters. Featuring orange bitters. Featuring grapefruit bitters. Hello, gin old fashioned. Gin old fashioned with grapefruit bitters. That's exact. Yes, you can make an old fashioned with gin. Actually, any spirit you choose. Thank you, Miss Housewife. The basic recipe in old fashioned is a great way to do that. Look at that. You provided a cocktail recipe for us. It's been overdue since we've done a cocktail recipe. Actually, I was thinking about, I, I feel like what I should have actually done was done the cocktail in between the bitters so as to better pace myself. To bitter pace myself, or so it seems. Um, I'm definitely gonna make this, but but first want to try it on their own first and then we'll come back to it Bitter housewife bitters apparently small batch with real ingredients, which is something I really like to see about these like I'll admit being Maybe it's a generational thing But I look at a bottle such as the one from fee brothers and I see like artificial colors in there And I see propylene glycol and artificial sweeteners and I, there's a piece of me that's just like a little There's a piece of me that's disappointed and I'm trying to figure out exactly like what 
makes me feel that way like what part of my upbringing or my environment causes me to feel that way and i just feel like there is a certain splendor that i think i get and then i feel when i know that what i'm drinking what i'm ingesting what i'm eating is like i guess for lack of a better term real or authentic or i don't know unprocessed might be a more accurate term for some reason when i see like this more like i I'll, i will from a flavor standpoint, there are sweeteners out there, artificial sweeteners and other artificially made things that if, like, they serve a particular purpose when it comes to the fine craft of flavors. Like there are, I think there are various like engineered chemicals out there. Everything's chemicals. Things in your body are chemicals. The things that make up my fingers, they're all chemicals. Chemicals is not a bad term. But there are chemicals out there that are specifically engineered to taste like, let's say, specifically strawberry. Or like specifically banana. Or like chemicals that already exist out there that give those flavors. And there's a purpose to keeping those out there and including them in things. And for that, I understand. Like, for example, there are flavors of banana that just don't exist in the wild anymore in large amount because it's just not economically feasible anymore because of the terrible Panama disease and the RIP Gross Michel banana. If you have something out there that is artificially made to taste like that, I understand the purpose of that. But for something like, I wanted to make the product red, I'm like, come on. A piece of me feels very like, and maybe I am totally, I'm totally checking myself when I say that this is probably just me up on my high horse, wanting to feel special and being a little narcissistic. And I admit to that. And then it's probably a little piece of, there's a little piece of pride that I'm owning up to. And uh, maybe one day I'll get past it, or maybe one day I'll seek, sink deeper into it and become the guy that because of my own, like, narcissism is just like, you can't play on my lawn, kids. You can't, because my lawn, as opposed to being like, the earth is its own. Feel free to dawdle wherever you want, young flowers of the earth. Um. Anyways, bitters, small batch, all natural. I just put, I put a number of little bitties in there. It smells are pretty good so far. What color is it? It's like mildly yellow-ish, kind of, just a little bit. How's it smelling? Hmm. Well, I'll be honest. Let's see, what is the alcohol content on it? This is 35% ABV. I, I haven't really been keeping track of the percentage of the other bitters so far, but this is like, it smells very alcoholic and I'm really not getting much of the grapefruit note on this. But let me fill it up with the water, dilute it just a tad, just as a means to like make it even across the other ones as opposed to just sipping like individual bitters. It's kind of got a very, very light color to it now. But like, I think this one's probably going to be more, more powerful on taste than on smell. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. At first, I was like, "This does not seem very bitter to me, or very grapefruit to me, more specifically." And like, if I had to pick a citrus, any citrus that describes what this flavor is of the citruses that I know, I'd have to go with grapefruit. Previously, one of the other bitters I was describing as being grapefruity because there is a certain bitterness to like the peel of a grapefruit, the grapefruit itself that was prominent in those bitters. I don't remember which ones they were. It might've been, I have no idea. I do not remember. I'm not getting that bitterness here. These bitters, not very bitter. Grapefruity, but more like a like a grapefruit juice, but without the sweetness or tartness, because grapefruits can be a little tart, at least for me, that you would get from like a regular like from an actual like squeezed fruit. Interestingly. And like I'm a little surprised by that. It it does add like that slightest note of grapefruit there i'm getting like i'm getting like a flashback to uh at the philadelphia flower show usually i think kettle one has this line of botanical spirits and i think they're basically as close to gin as you're gonna get if you stick with i think it's just still vodka it's just vodka and like they have a a cucumber i think they have a cucumber based one this is actually very not as fruit forward to me as it is vegetable forward this is almost like taking a sip of like you could call this cucumber bitters 
and I would believe you. And like, I'm a little, yeah, I stand by that. It's like, if I had to pick a fit, if I had to pick a citrus, I would pick grapefruit. But if I had to pick something else completely, I would say it's kind of, it, it's, it's kind of like, um, I just said the word for it and I forgot what it was. I forgot what green it was. Oh my God. It's not celery. It's not celery. Well, I had it and then I lost it. Cucumber. Cucumber was the one. And uh, actually, what's interesting to me now is I think about it this way. Like, if this to me evokes that feeling of cucumber, that evokes that taste of cucumber, then there's probably a wonderful way to enjoy this in combination with some cucumber flavor, right? And I'm like really curious on that. So we're gonna do some, you know what? I'm inspired, so we're gonna go for it. I see that the beauty of the Bitty Housewife has provided a recipe for us on their website. I will wind up linking that when I go through the recipes that we cover later. There's apparently not going to be too many recipes this time around. Just be pictures of bitters, I guess. Maybe. I don't know how I'm going to do the blog this evening. It's going to be a short blog, probably. But the recipe for a, what was it, a gin old-fashioned calls for two ounces of gin, half an ounce of simple syrup, 46 dashes of the grapefruit bitters, and a grapefruit twist to, to garnish. I was not preparing for this cocktail. I do not have a grapefruit twist to make. Oh, hi there. You must be the bitter housewife. You don't look very bitter to me. Wonderful. Although, everyone's got their nuance. Combine gin, simple, and bitters in a mixing glass. I'm going to do that and strain it all out. Great. So we're going to mix this, this drink. But instead of using gin... I'm actually even more curious to see how this tastes with something that has cucumber in it. And I do have, whoa, that's the wrong button. Huh, whoops. I do have a, uh, a bottle in my collection that sports cucumber. Let me go down and grab that because I've been looking for a means to use that. So what I have, what I have down here is a bottle of 21 seeds Cucumber jalapeno tequila infused with cucumber jalapeno and other natural flavor. I really think that this cocktail recipe could be improved or not, maybe not even improved because I didn't even try the original. So I'm not going to say it's an improvement because I wouldn't even know because I don't have the reference. But could be modified to bring out those more what I'm getting like maybe not cucumber notes themselves, but synergy with the cucumber-esque thing that we're getting here and i'm gonna try it so original recipe unless i'm unless i'm potentially copying it from somewhere who really knows i don't know what it's called yet but it's using these bitter housewife grapefruit bitters i'm very curious about it so that's what we're gonna do it'd be the first cocktail of the evening we're an hour and a half in hour and 40 minutes in it's the first cocktail of the evening i love that get yourself a mixing glass I'm gonna grab myself a big old cube from over here, one worth mixing with. Um, actually, I don't, I, I actually, um, I ran a little short on my um, my ices this evening. So uh, I forgot to put all the ice that I wanted to, to put together, um, together. So I don't have a lot of it, so I will be using it sparingly, but I do have uh, at least a couple big cubes prepped and ready. Uh, the other ones are, um, let's see, I put them in the freezer like, three hours ago, so they're probably not done yet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add, instead of adding two ounces of gin, I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna do a little taste of this cucumber jalapeno um, spirit first, because I wanna know what kind of, if it's if it's sweet enough on its own, or it needs the simple syrup or otherwise. Spicy, very jalapeno-y. Not super sweet, could definitely get some sweetness, a burn in the back of my throat, and like a very light cucumbery. So I want more of those cucumbery notes. So I'm thinking to make the most out of the bitters, I'm gonna keep with the four to six dashes of the grapefruit bitters, and then I'm gonna add, thinking about this for a little bit. I feel like two ounces of this might be too much. I'm think, I was thinking maybe an ounce and a half of this and then bring the simple syrup up to a full ounce, but that feels like it's almost too sweet. Maybe too sweet. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just the recipe that I see here and just sub out the gin for this instead and see how it goes. It might be a little, it might be sweet enough, maybe not. And then I'll add, I think what I'll do is I'll just add bitters to it until it feels like it's the proper, I guess, what I'm looking for out of it. We'll see. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take two ounces of, uh, if you're following the recipe by the book, it's two ounces of gin, but I'm using cucumber jalapeno tequila 
Cucumber jalapeno liqueur, I guess. Is this considered a liqueur? I'm not exactly sure. Let me oop, bottle around. Blanco tequila. Handcrafted in Jalisco, Mexico. Very cool. And then, a little quick cocktail. And uh, half an ounce of simple syrup. Right, right, right over here, grab that simple syrup. Um, that's the honey syrup I prepared. Got some simple syrup. There we go. Let's take half an ounce of simple syrup. Oh, really? Oh, three quarters of an ounce. Oh, interesting. This is one of my new measuring majiggers, and I just noticed some inscriptions on it on the inside that didn't gel with what I thought the actual measurements were on it, but uh, it, it, was, it was good. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. No problem. No problems here. And then we're going to add 46 dashes of the bitters. Is there any specific way to do this? Combine gin, simple, and bitters in the mixing glass. Great. Add ice and stir. So 46 dashes. Let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. I like things a little more bitters heavy. And I think that's where this cocktail is going. All right, let's give that a stir. And does it say what kind of glass we want to put that in? We put it in, strain into a tumbler. Strain into a tumbler with one to three large ice cubes. Huh. Well, I wouldn't certainly wouldn't use my large ice cubes now. That would be, if I put three large ice cubes into a single container, I don't even know whether I'd have enough liquid for that. I don't think that would work at all. I'm gonna put it into a glass with a single large ice cube, um, probably one of my spherical ones. I've been mixing for at least a couple seconds now, so I think we're probably good there. Interesting. This is gonna be interesting. Let's grab this glass over here. I'll move you cordial around there. I'm gonna get myself a little strainer, pop things into view. Uh, how you doing? How you doing? Nice little glass there. All right, let's do a little strainer. Don't need too much here, just a little, little strainer. Just to make sure that ice cube doesn't go nowhere. Uh, we'll put that over top of another ice cube. I'll get one of my spherical ones, because I have many. Or at least a number of them. Come here, you. Get one of them. Oop. There we go. That one. Pop you in my glass. Hello there. And then we'll kind of strain it all out. It also says to garnish with a grapefruit peel, grapefruit twist. I do not have grapefruit on me, unfortunately. Um, so instead, what I'm gonna do is I have some lemons. Uh, and I'm gonna do. I don't know if I want to, I think I want something a little more astringent. So I think the lemon is probably going to be my best bet there. So let me grab myself a whoop, little, ooh, I don't like that. That's, that's the wrong peeler. This is the correct peeler. We'll go peel it back here and just. Doesn't say to express. It just says to garnish with a twist. So I'm going to twist this in the background. And then it's like. I'm just gonna drop it in. Alrighty. This is our... I don't know what to call this yet. This is now... Uh, I guess if the other if the other one was called a gin old-fashioned, this is considered the, I guess, cucumber jalapeno grapefruit old-fashioned. I suppose. If I had to be specific about it, I guess that's probably what I'd call it. Right in the nose. Getting a little bit of those lemons. I didn't specifically express the lemon oils over top of this glass because I really didn't think it would be a good place there. But I'm getting notes of the cucumber right off the bat. It's quite nice. And a little bit of that jalapeno. There's like, it smells like the, the liquor that we're using for it. That is good. That is nice. There was, I was afraid that there was gonna be too much spiciness from the jalapeno notes in here, but those cucumber notes are prominent. It was, I don't know if it's being exacerbated or, or like supported by that of the grapefruit bitters in there. There was a, there was a, a slight, slight, slight bitterness there 
from, I think, those more grapefruit notes that are lending them themselves to the addition of the bitters. I'm going to add a few more bitters to here and see if it changes anything. But the the, the proportions of the half an ounce or um, what is it, 15 milliliters of the simple syrup does really good to balance out the more spicier notes of the jalapeno and the more the more like savory notes of the the agave from the tequila. That's pretty. That's pretty good. I think like. I feel like if I wanted to make this a little more complex, there could be something added here, something more botanical. This might even be improved by adding a little bit of gin to it or something else entirely. Maybe like a more like, maybe like a little bit of Reposado tequila if you split the base between this cucumber jalapeno tequila and like a Reposado, something that's a little more like oaky, a little more vanilla-y, spicy-ish. But it's sweet, it's spicy. It's good. It's very nice, actually. I'm gonna add a couple more of the grapefruit bitters. I wanna see if it changes it a little bit. I added four more. We'll see if that changes things up a little bit. Oh yeah, oh, for sure. The, what I thought, the sweetness coming from the simple syrup is being changed by the grapefruit bitters. I think the simple syrup provides that base sweetness and the grapefruit bitterness acts upon the sweetness added by the simple. The cucumbery notes are what I feel, what what is what I'm left with on my I guess the the finish of this cocktail would be those cucumbery notes with a little bit of the sweetness that tastes now kind of like a sugared grapefruit because of the way that the bitters have modified that. Interestingly enough, it's not really touching the, the jalapeno notes have just, they've gotten just a tad bit less prominent with the addition of more liquid. Um, and the cucumber notes are just as present as they were before. It's almost like there's water or like notes of the water that I used in the drink. And I think that's coming from the more third cucumbery notes. That's pleasant. I would say, I guess I'll call that a, it's not a gin old fashion. It was modified from a gin old fashion. I would call that. Call it how it is. It is a cucumber jalapeno old fashioned. It's exactly what it is with a little tequila based spirit. So that was pretty cool. Ginger, what would I call that? Yeah, I don't need to put it up on the board. Y'all got the gist of it. Gin, cucumber jalapeno old fashioned with original inspiration by the Bitter Housewife. Thank you, Bitter Housewife, for your bitters and your reference material. Pretty good. Pretty good indeed. I at least have one cocktail this evening. I have something to write the blog about later. I say, or maybe just like, you know what? Maybe I just let myself off easy. Maybe I'm just like, I tasted a bunch of bitters. Watch the video. Or maybe not. So, grapefruit bitters are now out of the way. I have five more bitters that I would like uh, to try this evening and like, you know, pit on their own and maybe do another cocktail or two, depending on how I feel, how I'm feeling later. So things get a little more, I'd say a little more fun, I think from here, from here forward. It's interesting to think that like, so the other bitters that remain are bitters that, it's a combination of bitters that I've gotten from a variety of different sources. A couple of these bitters I got early on when I started mixing because the flavors looked cool. And I was like, I can't wait to use these flavors in cocktails. And I never really understood how to use them. I would add them to something here and there. And I was like, well, but I don't know how to make that into a cocktail. I just know how to add that to let's say um, ice cream or water or maybe a pastry, like a cookie or something, just to add a little extra spice. And, and we'll get there for that. And one in particular, I was able to acquire because of what I do up here. So uh, we'll, we'll get to it in just a second. So let me get myself a coaster for this guy and we'll move on to, we'll do the Woodford Reserve bitters because I've got two of those guys, Woodford Reserve. Like I said, I'm getting this started over here. I'm actually very curious if there's anybody willing to share out there about the bitters that you've used in your experience, or if you've never actually had bitters before, have any sort of questions on what, you, if you had to go buy a bitters, what could that bitters be? I'm curious to see if there's anybody else out there who has like experimented specifically with bitters themselves, or maybe, maybe not even just experiment with the bitters, but utilize 
them as a means to change up the cocktails that you were already making. Woodford. Reserve. Woodford Reserve. So, let's do a little, let's do the thing that we've been doing where we go to the internet and we determine what we're finding. Woodford Reserves. Bitters. Did I spell it right? Look at that, I did. Bourbon Barrel Foods, Woodford Reserve Bitters, all six full-size bitters line. Hello there. When I tried to check this last night, the site was down, so luckily it's actually working this morning. Hello. Bitters, six full-size bottles. What do you, collect all of them, my goodness. Oh, aromatic bitters, sassafras, bitters, is there a scissors? Uh-huh, I can barely read that. Wow, do you have like a about us? That'd be cool. Tell me, explore, contact us, inspire. Inspire me, Woodford Reserve. Inspire, wait, what is that? Recipes, blog, videos. Chef testimonials, the press room, explore. Maybe I want to explore about bourbon barrel foods. You can visit them in Louisville, apparently. About bourbon barrel foods. Hello, bourbon barrel foods produces a collection of mystique in Kentucky bourbon country. Excellent. All of our items are handcrafted in small batches in Louisville, Kentucky. We use reclaimed barrels straight from Kentucky's finest bourbon distilleries in both smoking and aging agent. As both smoking and aging agent, this process imparts an added dimension to the flavor that cannot be replicated using any other method. It's very specific. Signature product of the bluegrass soy sauce. That's pretty cool. I don't drink soy sauce, although I did once have a beer that tasted like soy sauce and the kind of sauce that you can make for yourself at a sushi restaurant. It was wild. In any case, so Woodford, Woodford Reserve is apparently another one of those um, bitters companies that uses small batches to be able to distribute their product. Kind of like, I think the Bitter House was also one of them. I can't say the same about the other dudes. Not so sure. Um, and they are well, well known for apparently their bluegrass soy sauce, which I didn't know about until I Googled it now. So we've learned a little some, excuse me, something together. These particular bitters I came across very early on, uh, like three or three or four years ago, when I was down vacationing with my family, and I saw that there was the sassafras and sorghum bitters as well as chocolate bitters. Chocolate bitters I had heard of up to that point. I thought that's pretty cool. And sassafras and sorghum bitters, sassafras I had heard of as like the base flavor for like. Coca-Cola, apparently early like sarsaparillas were flavored using sassafras. Um, and that was something I saw and I was like, oh, I gotta have some of those. I also note that on these bottles, they both say bourbon barrel aged. So apparently those bourbon barrels that they say they, they would reclaim from the other, you know, K Kentucky bourbonites in K uh, Bourbon County, um, they use those to actually make these bitters. And oddly enough, I can see, there. it looks like there used to be a number like written on the chocolate bitters bottle, um, but it is incomprehensible now. I want to try the, or the chocolate bitters first and then the sassafras and sorghum bitters next. So let me grab a fresh cordial glass. I think we're, we're at that point where we might as well be using one of those instead. Hello. Hello there. These one actually comes, these come with droppers. They do not come with dashers. So I'm going to add, let's see, like Yeah, we'll just add a whole dropper full in there. I think that's good enough. Right off the bat, as I was uh, releasing that from the pipette, it smells so chocolatey. It's like somebody, you know, powdered milk chocolate, cocoa powder, for instance, and like liquefied it. It's a, uh, it's very like, it's a little, it's a little truffly, I would say. Truffly and like a little more on the dark chocolate side, but kind of mocha like, at least on the nose for now. It smells awesome. It actually smells very similar to like Rocky Road ice cream. I'll add some water to that. It's nice. It's like, it's a brownish, it's a brownish kind of color. Mm. Bitter chocolate. It's like, like bitter, dark baking chocolate. Like if you are like me, then once upon a time, you probably saw like the eight, like if you like 70% cocoa, you were like, I want more. 
give me the 80%. You got the 80% cocoa, you're like, I can do better. Get the 92% and you're like, all right, this is pretty good. And then you went for the 100% cocoa and you just bit that and you're like, okay. Um, I've, I've tried 100% cocoa powder before, or cocoa just in general, and it's, I, I like it. It's not like something that I would eat on the regular, like by choice. I like, I think my favorite is probably around the 70 to 80% range. But this is like, like biting into like pure, unadulterated chocolate is what it tastes like. Uh, and it's got those bitter components to it too. There's a certain drying effect. And I think more on the cocoa powder side of things because it does kind of leave my mouth a little dry. Anna, once upon a time, went down to Guatemala and brought back some chocolate with her. And it reminds me so much of just the block of chocolate that she brought back with her. Like a block of like cocoa powder. I mean, I don't know if it was intended to be powder, but that block, when you touched it even a little, came off as like dust. And that dust was dry dark chocolate with that powdery like i've been sitting in a truck or something like i've been sitting out in like the desert just like collecting or like just being seeped completely of moisture and it's delicious and it goes excellent in a hot cocoa these two i would say go excellent in a dark cocoa very very dark chocolatey and i love that there is a tinge of sweetness there like in the way that it it sits on my tongue and it's as if i like licked a thing of like just like regular like 60 percent 70 percent dark chocolate but for the most part it is very prominently cocoa cocoa powder as hundred as as pure as you can possibly get um at least as it pertains to putting putting liquid in your mouth that is delightful so like this i know when i first got it i was like wow this would go really really well with like like on top of some vanilla ice cream. And I think right then and there, because I was on vacation at the time, I went and grabbed myself some ice cream and drank a little bit on top. And I was, um, I was prideful, because I was like, yep, this does taste very good. Uh, didn't taste as chocolatey as I wanted it to, because I only put a couple of drops on it, but... That's good, dude. That's very, very good. And so, the other set of bitters that I've got from Woodford Reserve is the sassafras and sorghum bitters, which I know when I first found them, I was like, oh, so is this gonna taste like Coca-Cola? Cause like sarsaparilla and like the precursors to the cola industry were uh, flavoring themselves the sassafras. And uh, well, we'll get to it. Cause I think I was like, yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little caramelly, maybe. Um, we'll, we'll jump on that again. Um, sassafras and I think in sorghum, um, I don't know exactly too much about it. Let's see, actually, let me, let me go to one of my books that I have over here um, that I like to search through when I'm thinking of botanicals. If I can find the book. There you are. I got you there. In the back of this book, The Drunken Botanist by Amy Stewart, are a number of different botanicals. And when I try to think about the different botanicals that I see mentioned for liqueurs and botanicals, I usually go to this book because I like it. Let's see. So one will be sarsaparilla, sa whoa, sassafras, I know is in this book. Sath, ha, sassafras, sassafras. Folks, turn your book to page 192, and apparently there's one on page 235 as well. But 192 seems to be the book, seems to be the part. Sassafras. Sassafras and the Drunken Botanist imagine a situation that European colonists found themselves in when they arrived in North America. They brought what food and medicine they could, but much of it was already consumed and spoiled. By the time they came ashore, they encountered plants and animals they'd never seen before and had no choice but to undertake a dangerous game of trial and error to find out what they could eat or drink. Any berry, leaf, or root could either save them or kill them. And one of them was sassafras. Highly aromatic tree, leaves, roots, and bark are used to put, uh, are used as a medical remedy. And uh, in 1773, it was described in the early history of colonies as being used to promote perspiration, to attenuate thick and viscous humors, to remove obstructions, and to cure the gout and the palsy, evidently. Now, down a little bit, we see a couple things talking about how sassafras eventually uh, began to take these sassafras, like, stuff and make it into root liqueur root beer flavored spirits or that contain like birch bark and black tea and spices um no sassafras without it later on i think i skipped an entire thing there um wah. in any case sassafras it seems and then i want to see if sorghum is in here s 
O sword, 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 but all sorghum, 88 to 95. Wow, there's a lot of them. Wow. Look at page 88, if you got it. 88. I uh, see sorghum. Sorghum, sorghum, sorghum. I don't really know what sorghum is, to be honest. Sorghum. Oh, wow, this is a whole... Wow. There is an entire number of pages on sorghum. I have to go back and take a look at that at some point. It says sorghum was used, sorghum beer, a grain type thing for porridge or gruel. There's a lot of history in here. Mao Tai, Baiju. Chinese sorghum liqueur is known as Baijiu. Baiju, or other grains can be used, millet, rice, wheat, or barley. But sorghum has a long history in Asia, where the earliest distilled spirits from grain were made 2,000 years ago. So sorghum has that, has that cool like background to it too, that historical context. I've learned something else today. Book. That fell in the weirdest of ways. S the Sassafras and Sorghum. I don't know exactly what I got from that book. It definitely requires further further reading on my part. Uh, sometimes I go into the books and I'm like, am I going to get like a, a, uh, like a short and sweet description? No. It's time to pour yourself a drink, sit down, get comfy, and come along for the ride. Because there's a... There's a science behind this stuff. Culinary science. Botany. Whatever it may be, it's there. So, not a lot of color on this one. It smells very strongly of like, I'm getting, it's almost, it feels very, it, like it smells almost very coastal to me. It does have an air of like, birch beer to it that I'm getting. Not quite like the Coca-Colas and stuff, but I have a feeling that if I just mix this up with a little bit of water, it's gonna taste very similar to some root beers, birch beers that I've had in the past. Yeah, it's, it's very clear color to it. Very, very clear color indeed. We'll switch back to the other angle. I hear somebody approaching. Good night. Have a good night, my love. Sorghum and, uh, what was the other one? Sassafras. Ooh, that's bitter. Ooh, that's very bitter. That is the bitterness and flavor that I would expect from a tree. It reminds me, when I had those notes of like birch beer, it was like the birch tree. Like I th feel like, and I have no knowledge of most trees, but like the word cedar came to mind as if it was a cedar wood or like a cedar like pine or something. Not quite pine, not quite those flavors or smells, but like this is very like tree bark. It feels very tree barky. And a piece of that feels like it could be a little cinnamon, it could be a little birch or Something else that peels off of trees. Very tree-like. And it's bitter too. Both of these Woodford Reserve bitters are undoubtedly bitter. If you are trying to add a certain air of something to your cocktail, sassafras, sorghum, or chocolate, and you want something that is particularly bitter that actually carries through into the cocktail, I feel like these would be the ones. I feel like it's a little difficult to actually cr like create the cocktails in the, I guess, quote unquote, normal sense. In, in the way that you dash your bitters. In this case, it's gonna be a little difficult to dash. I mean, what I've been meaning to do at some point is get those little bottles that kind of look like these little guys with the little bulb at the top and the pointiness at the end, where you can just like dash, you just put it into the container, you can dash any of those bitters. I don't have any of those containers yet. They're, little, like, they're like oil containers. I've seen them at like Italian restaurants and stuff. I should just like should take one of them and then leave a good tip on the table because they're gonna have to buy more of those if I steal it from the store. I'm a morally questionable person sometimes that's pretty good it's definitely more bitter that feels like it needs to be mixed with something uh because those those more like i feel like i've definitely picked some, the total total side digression i used to go on a lot of adventures out into the woods when i was younger and to be fair i feel like i had definitely at one point or another like taken bark off of trees and eaten them there were birch trees in the back of my parents house and i definitely <laughs> munched on them and uh it tastes very similar to that or other things that i just wanted you know put my mouth on in the woods um which i didn't do very often because i'm afraid of dying and like if you're not careful and you go into the woods and you just put random things in your mouth you have a probability of dying if you don't know what you're doing and that's not really something that i want to be a part of not for a very long time or at least or at least until next week you know if i can at least make it to next week and then the week after, if I can just make it another week, I think I'll be okay. 
Very nice. I can understand taking this, mixing it with a bit of simple syrup and some club soda. Take any of these and make them in soda. Actually, I remember when we were on the Bitter Housewife page, it said uh, there was a section on bitters and soda. And I, I think it's gotten completely underutilized in my own exploration of bitters, but you can take any of these, mix them with a bit of, actually you can take anything, mix it with a bit of syrup or take, this, take whatever it is that you have and make it into a syrup and add some club soda to it and you've made your own soda. It's like magic. Like any of these syrups that I wind up creating for the stream, either get tossed into some coffee and made into a latte or mixed with club soda to create my own little fizzy beverage. And it's great. It's an excellent way to go through your syrups before they go through, I guess, go bad. I was gonna say, go through your syrups before they go through you. I mean, I guess if you let the syrup sit out for a little while and it goes bad, it's, uh, you know, it's gonna get a little wonky, so to speak, but yeah. Good stuff indeed. All right, sweet. So the next cocktail, so the next set of bitters that I have here, there's there's three of them left, and they were all also they were they. Well, I'll start from this side to the other side. I don't want to. I want to end with these guys last because they're cool. We've got left some mole bitters. We have cherry bark vanilla bitters as well as charred cedar and currant bitters and i want to go in this order so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to try these other bitters these mole bitters by actually one of our fellow twitch senders out there aka colino 12. uh there was a wonderful little uh i think there was a trivia show that was going on and Oh, and it seemed that uh, we managed to win ourselves some bitters over there, which was pretty, which was pretty, pretty cool. He actually makes some of his own bitters, and I'll give him a shout out here in a second. He's probably streaming right now, and uh, it's worth giving it. If you're into cocktails, it's worth giving this gentleman a follow as well, because he's the guy. He's doing a lot of really, really cool stuff over there. I think I popped in the other night. It's, it's, it's wonderful. It's always a really, really good vibe in Colin's chat. They're playing games over there. They're doing trivia and stuff. It is a wonderful vibe. Yeah, I think it. Like his place encompasses the the like party bar more so than mine even does. But uh, I'm trying to figure out the I'm trying to type the command. I forgot a slash shout out. Give that man the love that he deserves. A wonderful time as well. I don't know if he's streaming right now, but if he is, I'm curious to see what he's up to, and we'll probably pop into his chat a little bit later. But so, his bitters that he sent to me are these mole bitters, and when I had these, I actually brought them over to a friend's house of mine, because he also has mole bitters that he's a big fan of. So, when I got these ones, I was so looking forward to, um, I was really, really looking forward to giving this a try, uh, on the side, like, on, um, excuse me, side by side with these other mole bitters that my buddy Eric has. And we both made chocolate Manhattans with this, these bitters. These go excellent in a chocolate Manhattan. And I think when I remember what I've, I'll taste them again, obviously, but what I remember about these are mole is a type of like, um, like a chocolatey kind of spice sauce. And these had notes of baking spice, chocolate and like actual spice like an ancho chili and so i'm very curious to see what they are like this was wonderful i mean it's very possible if you like to win stuff you can probably get a bottle of these too if you stick around in colin's chat actually inspiring to me to want to try to make some of these bitters you got colino out there who's making his bitters running his show i think larix is also doing bitters as well oh i gotta hop on that train it sounds like it's fun Yo! Oh dang, baseball games run far too long, says Brad. Our guest from last week sticking around for nine months. My god! The subscription is now the... It, it's, a, it's a baby. A, a, a subscription baby has been born. Welcome to the world, subscription baby. We appreciate you greatly. Love you, Brad. Oh, let's see. Baseball games are cool, right? The... Uh, charge? Baseball? Whack. Home run. Anyway, Kalino's bitters have a smell that is very... Hmm. It's very pepper forward. This reminds me of the smell of the jalapeno aspects of that cucumber jalapeno tequila that we used earlier to make this cucumber jalapeno old fashioned. Very, very tasty. Brad's saying that the baseball game is a doubleheader, which takes five 
five ever, which for those who don't know is one level up from four ever and one level down from six ever. And in terms of baseball games, that means it's taken a long time. However, peppery things, peppery things indeed. This is very like, it's almost like jalapeno-y. There's a spiciness to it that reminds me of peppers, like spicy peppers, uh, at least from the smell. There's also like, I want to say that there's an air of chocolateiness to it, but I'm not quite getting it off the nose. Uh, but if I add, when I add a little bit of dilution to this, we'll see if that winds up uh, flowing through. This, that's again, these are Kalino, Kalino 12's Mole Bitters. I won from the, one of his trivia shows. Mm. I forgot to switch the angle for a second there. It is very prominently like a, like a, it's a pepper. And I want to say it's an ancho chili pepper. It's chili pepper. It's chili powder. It's very, it's very, very chili peppery. I would say in terms of the, the notes that I'm getting there, it's got a hint of that, like baking chocolateness. There is also, there's something almost like vegetal in there it almost reminds me of the taste of like a gourd almost like there's there's something that's almost i want to say almost pumpkin-y about it and i mean more like pumpkin bread as opposed to let's say like a pumpkin pie like there's not a lot of sweetness in it it's very forward on the spice uh and i think that's like the prominent like flavor here it's that spice as opposed to the bitterness there's not i'm not getting a lot of bitterness from it at least then again i'm mixing it with water naturally um but there's those notes of the like chili pepper and there's a little bit of that bacon uh, bacon chocolate in there as well as something that's a little more like down to earth a little more gourdy like a pumpkin or like a like a squash of some sorts curious to see like what the recipe is there maybe but alas i like to keep some people who have their their secrets let let the mystique like kind of speak for itself it's very good and i will say that this goes excellent in a chocolate old-fashioned and just for the purpose of being able to reiterate that for the people at home the recipe that i have for the chocolate old-fashioned i think i have it down here right i hope i have it in my collection Ooh, chocolate old fashion nope hmm. oh no no it's a chocolate manhattan that's it. It's a chocolate Manhattan. And apparently I never actually recorded it in my recipe book. But a Manhattan is made with your, uh, I think, one to two ounces of whiskey, depending on what your what your proportions are. It's preferably rye, if you got it. I think we use a Rittenhouse rye. You add an ounce of the sweet vermouth. Uh, Carpana Antica is the, the recommended one there. And then you add some bitters to it. Three, three dashes of like Angostura bitters. If you're making a chocolate Manhattan, I believe the recipe included also a little bit of creme de caco or Kahlua. Uh, or Mr. Black. It was either creme de caco, Kahlua, or some other coffee liqueur like Mr. Black, and then you add some sort of mole bitters to it as well. And it, it's just, oh, it's delectable, and it's tasty. Um, I'll try that. Good. We'll move on to the other two bitters that I have for this evening. I actually, I'm actually realizing that we're now at like the two and a half, two, two and a half hour mark, two and 20 minutes. I think what's gonna wind up happening is I'm only gonna do one more cocktail this evening. I'm getting mighty, mighty tired back here. I decided to dress up fancy for the stream and I have all of my buttons buttoned up and I am like, <laughs> I'm like smoking back here. It's wild. But um, I think I spent a lot more time on the bitters than I thought they would, that I would, but this has been fun. So uh, I'll see how I want to do the cocktail block later. Brad says, I had a great Manhattan riff that did non-Angostura bitters, and it's on the list for you and Anna when you come down my way. Woo! What kind of bitters did they use? How, did they, how else did they change it up? I'm curious about that. So the next bitters that I have for everyone is these char, no, it's the cherry bark vanilla from Bitter Cube Bitters, which is, which is awesome. There's a whole... I'd say if I had to pick a favorite set of bitters in my collection so far, and again, I don't really know how to use properly any of these bitters. However, it doesn't mean that I can't pick favorites. So this was by Bittercube. 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 Bittercube bitters. So Bittercube bitters um slow crafted bitters actually we'll go to their site we'll do a little bit of research we're all together here orange and walnut bitters 
Nom nom, nom nom, and that sounds awesome. I love the idea of walnut bitters, which I feel like it's not the first time I'm hearing of them. Bitter cube bitters. What do we got over here? Hello, Bitter Cube. Sponsored Bitter about Bitter Cube. Tell me more about Bitter Cubed. Featured in, created in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, by hand with real ingredients. Our mission is to create innovative, densely flavored bitters through thoughtful sourcing and meticulous production and ongoing research and to inspire elevated drinking experiences. Two bartenders with a shared vision set out to, just for you, look at that, set out to produce the most distinctive lineup of bitters in the world. And did they do it? There's a lot of them, but it looks like they might have done it. Fee, aka Fee Brothers, makes a great black walnut bitters available at what I assume are most crafty stores. Fee Brothers has so many different bitters out there. I was recollecting Brad when we uh, when we went out and I got that one rhubarb Danish. I think the Fee Brothers bitters that I recognize the most are their rhubarb bitters, despite the fact that I've never tried them. But one day I want to. There's like I feel like the last time I went to oh my god I don't remember where I was, but I walked into a liquor store. And I was like, do you have any local spirits? Because I wanted to buy spirits from the local area. And they were like, no, not really. So then I just went to the back and I looked at all the stuff that they had. And I saw an entire two shelves full of Fee Brothers bitters. They have so many different types. Oh, and they're cranberry bitters. It was great. Love the rhubarb, says Brad. And I have it at my home bar for when you and Anna come here. Oh, great. So many different flavor experiences. I've been trying to travel a little bit more. Who knows that going to visit people who are also fans of the craft improves you as a craftsman. And it's great. So these particular bitters from Bitter Cube, elevating cocktail experiences everywhere, are their cherry bark vanilla bitters, which I remember when I had this for the first time. I think I, think I caught me trying this for the first time on stream and I was gonna say I was trying to remember what the flavor was but I didn't need to because I caught a whiff of it it is like also like ginger snap it is so like this smells like there is a cookie store it's not just here in Philadelphia the cookie store can be found everywhere it's called insomnia cookies and I swear that they're putting something in their chocolate chip cookies and it's this stuff it also reminds you like it's got like it reminds me of those chocolate chip cookies minus the chocolate it reminds me of their snickerdoodles it reminds me of ginger snaps this just smells like a really really good cookie could also be a sugar cookie it might be the sugar cookies too their sugar cookies are, in some of the cookies are just freaking amazing they're just awesome oh brad has these too you know it's funny I popped onto a, another bartender stream. Uh, I don't remember what their handle is, otherwise I would give them a shout out as well. But I saw specifically these bitters on their bar and I was like, oh my God, you have bitters lab. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I got these. And uh, he really didn't talk too much about it and I was a little disappointed, but alas, expectant Cameron must be put in his place. Brad says the cherry bark vanilla makes a great old fashioned. Also, it was a revelation. You can also just toss a dash in your coffee to make them better. Yes, yes. Also true, because these notes remind me of like, it's almost like sprinkling cinnamon up on top. In any case, in any case, look at these bitters. Look at this bottle. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my bitters comple collection's complete? You would be wrong. Because I don't have every bitters. I don't. The color is like yellow. I don't know why I keep doing this. It's, it's yellow. Take a look at the yellowness. <laughs> Oh, it still smells so good. It smells like fresh cookies. <laughs> like a nice snickerdoodle. Oh, it's so good. It's like, it's so interesting to think that there are some flavors out there that just like completely transport me to another place. This takes me back to my years in college. It is 2.30 in the morning. The frat party is pretty much ending and I'm really and I'm hanging out with my brothers and we're like we need to go we we need to go get some food. And I'm like, well, the pizza places are closed now. The only thing open is Insomnia. And so naturally we make our way down to Insomnia Cookies. You walk inside, they're going to close in a half hour or maybe an hour and a half. I don't remember exactly when they close, but you just get that waft of cookie scent. You open up the door, you're drunk out of your mind, but you walk in there as if you're like, you're totally sober and you put on your best face and you're like, cookies. And they're like, what kind of cookies would you like? You're like, 
You just point, you say nothing, but they know what you mean. And they pack six of those cookies in a box for you, and you go home. And lucky for you, your fraternity brother really likes peanut butter cookies, and you managed to grab at least one of them, but you managed to grab three snickerdoodles pretty much all for yourself. Uh, the you, in this case, is an analogy for me, mere menacing on my college days. Wow. What a journey. It's so good. Oh my god. It's like a liquefied. It's like, so if you imagine like one of those snickerdoodles just like liquefied and put into a cup, it's a little watered down naturally. But um, it's that. That's what it is. And it's just absolutely freaking delightful. And apparently, taking, putting this and putting in a little bit of coffee, it's great. Going back to that now, continuing to think about, I specifically wanted to do a stream on bitters because I wanted to give myself the excuse, totally out of self-interest here, nothing for you, only for me, he says ironically and possibly sarcastically. I wanted to take all the bitters and put them on the bar and have an excuse to go through every single one of them just so I can get ideas of what to do with them. And as per usual, you can take anything in your bar, you can put it in coffee. You can put some club soda on it. You can make it into a syrup, thicken it up a little bit with some more sugar. You can put it in with tonic water, you can put them in a little bit of water, you can drink them straight, put them on ice, whatever you want to do. <laughs> There's so many different ways to cocktail. <laughs> and it's beautiful. I just got that hiccup of mine tasted like jalapeno. Oh my goodness. I realize I'm not drinking my little cucumber jalapeno old fashioned back here because I'm too, I don't want to ruin the tasting experience for the rest of the bitters. Oh. It's great. Our favorite place is Brad has like 28 bitters on tap or rather on the bar. I was going to say on tap. What? That's wild. That's an insane amount of bitters. That's like, give me a Trinidad sour. Give me a, a bitter cube, cherry bark, vanilla sour. Just like take the entire bottle, dump it into a cocktail shaker and add an egg white and stuff to it. A little bit of simple syrup, maybe some rum. Sounds good. It does sound very good. So the last bitters that I have for this evening, because it's literally the last, it's literally the only other bitters that I have, are these Bitters Lab charred cedar and currant ones. Uh, these one, this, these, these bitters are an anomaly to me. More than awesome says Trinidad Sour is definitely our dessert drink of choice. That's interesting to hear about it being the dessert drink of choice. I think the only, I don't, I don't think I've ever actually made for myself a Trinidad Sour before. The closest thing I had to a Trinidad Sour was a, a, um, a nerd-based drink, Klingon Blood Wine. Mr. Greg from How to Drink's Recipe, and I was like, wow, I can't do this. And then I had a different drink with, I think it was mezcal or tequila in it, and I was like, all right, this is better. And I have yet to go back to the Trinidad Sour. I don't know why, I just haven't. Bitters. Lab. As if we were sciencey people, because we are sciencey people sometimes. I would like it, the Trinidad Sour. It's like Christmas in a glass. That sounds pleasing. So Bitters Lab is the last Bitters brand that I have prepared for this evening. Bitters Lab. Bitters Lab Bitters. Small batch cocktail bitters. It is cool to see that a number of these bitters that I see here, the ones that I picked up totally on my own, were small batch. I don't know if there's like, there's something that feels almost a little bougie about small little batch bitters. I don't know if it feels luxurious because they are in small batches in the sense that there might not be a, you might be the only, the only people who have them in your collection, which apparently is not the case. Get a 10% off my first order. Okay, cool. Cocktails and bacon. Distill it. Whoa, Bitters Lab Club, the Beehive Distillery. What else do we see over here? Is there an about Bitters Lab? It'd be cool. About, hello. Wow, I can't read that from here. Speaking of which, everybody out there, I mean, I am actually, actually I have it right here. This is gonna be, this is gonna be really funny. I have been meaning for a while to add another screen to the bar so that I don't have to squint and look at chat. Well, guess what I just got the other day? It's not set up yet, but, but, I have a third monitor. I have to mount it on the wall. I haven't done it yet, but I will. Oh, don't fall on the ground. Okay, you fell on the ground. That's fine. <laughs> we always like to improve upon things every once in a while around here. <laughs> nice. Oh wait, is it? Is this in Salt Lake City? Bitters Lab? I don't know. Is it? I can't see. What does it say? Our 
our bidders, social responsibility, stock list, contact, private workshop request. Cool. I want to know about your bidders. I don't know about your bitters. Behind the flavors. Get the full story behind our beloved bitters from the inspiration and origin on how it's made. Look at all these ones. Aromatic, charred cedar and currant. I love those ones. It's the ones that I have right here. I wish I had known this, Cameron. I had like four monitors in my closet. No, 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 no. I have many monitors in my closet. It didn't it didn't click to me the other day that I thought like mod like a mountable monitor arm on the wall. First of all, I was like, I shouldn't be putting in the holes in the wall. That's very, very bad because I read. But I don't give a shit. I'm just gonna fill up the holes before I leave. And then the other part was, oh man, monitor arms must be expensive. No, this thing was $15 on Amazon. I don't know what the hell. I was thinking Did a little Google search away chat <laughs> it says shardy cedar and Quran tea bitters because I'm really zoomed in on the page further there we go now I can read that released in 2015 this is our flagship flavor what we're best known for and our top seller smoky mildly sweet and completely unique a potent woody flavor reminiscent of barrel aged whiskey but with a subtly sweet and tart undertone of black currants try it in food drinks uh, behind the bitters hello that's the the bitters that's the I think that's their black Manhattan recipe right 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 yeah, that's that's the one. That's the one. I am going to be making a black Manhattan after this. I want to. I need. I need to. These are an anomaly to me because I have tasted these bitters in my free time on multiple occasions, and like I, I've never licked a cedar tree. I've never charred a cedar tree and then licked it, and I've never had. I've actually had red currant berries in my life. Back when I was traveling through Europe, we went through this town called Dinkelsbühel, and they were selling red currants. And I got a little thing of them, and I was, along the trip, I would throw them up in the air and catch them in my mouth. And I got at least 40 to 50 in a row. It was quite the spectacle and something I was very proud of in my young teen years. However, since then, I've only seen current in my life. Current has popped up in my life in a variety of different places. I think current has been like the mystery flavor on like two different candies that I tasted growing up. One I think was Airheads. One might have been some other like bubblegum company. Um, current followed me while I was doing some traveling, the red ones in particular. And I also had this like bath soap that I used to wash my body or hair with. And it was specifically like current smell. And I would smell it and like these, like that flavor smell like just hits me straight in the nostalgia every single time and i don't quite remember whether or not these bitters accomplish the same goal but um hey that's what we're doing this for to see whether or not i can evoke more feelings of the past the past the bitter bitter past with these bitter bitter bitters it's difficult to kind of yeah there we go a couple more bitter things in there so do I get the nostalgia? Am I get the, getting the feeling of my nostalgias? Not quite. It's not quite the nostalgic flavor that I have. It's a little more heavy on the more the char, the charred cedar notes. I will say that this kind of smells like you're roasting marshmallows over a fire. And if you're like me, you let the marshmallows start to bubble and crackle and blacken because you're a sick motherfucker like me. Uh, and that's what this fire smells like when you're just completely burning the shit out of the marshmallow and then you eat it like the monster that you know you are. I know that I am. It kind of smells like that. Kind of smells like bur a burning campfire, like the burning of buildings and stuff, or more particularly um, gelatinous, sugary substances like marshmallows. Um, I get that, and I also get like it, it reminds me of like the baking cabinet again. It reminds me again of like the cookie, the, like the pastry cookie notes from a from the uh, cherry bark vanilla ones. This is more like there is a particular um, bakery here in the city and i think it's called the pan quotidian and for some reason they have like a wonderful smell when you walk inside and it's as opposed to like the insomnia cookies where it's a little more sugary it's a little more cookie like this is a little more pastry like a little more muffin croissant bready but like but like croissants that have like those little like they got little things in them like blueberries or chocolate or raspberries or currants or otherwise i mean that's where i'm getting that from Look at what color it is. It looks dark. When I add water to it, it becomes less dark. Wow, it's like brown, but it's also kind of yellow. Who knew? That's incredible.
Hmm. I still don't have any... Okay, so... I'm not getting those nostalgia notes. So it's not the same current that I've experienced throughout my life. Not as climactic as I thought it was going to be. However, there is undeniably this fruity weirdness that like, like there are certain things that I would describe as having like a fruity weirdness. Elderflower is one of them. It's, it's like tangy and it's weird. Lychee is also kind of tangy. It's weird in its own special way. I say weird in the most heartfelt and positive way possible. I just don't have the vocabulary to properly describe it. This also has that weird, funky, like almost as if this was like sap from a tree, but a gummy type tree. I say that almost out of nowhere, but like it almost feels like it could be, it could be coming from sap. Sap from a cedar tree, perchance. Again, I don't know anything about wood. Or, uh, or wooden products, or wooden trees, trees that are made of wood. But the whole note of charred cedar in there makes me think that this could almost be like cedar sap. And there's a sweetness there. But like, it's not a very, it's not a very potent sweetness because instead of there being like a sugary, like sweet flavor that you get like right off the bat, it's bitter. It's not astringently bitter, it's like almost like a hoppy bitterness. Like when you drink an IPA, it's not like it's assaulting your taste buds. It's like it's caressing them in a cool way. I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do this because it's wildly inappropriate, but if you imagine a sensual motion where instead of pinching at something, you're caressing it. <laughs> That's how I would describe this type of bitterness as opposed to bitterness from let's say like an Angostura bitters or like those or they, those um Bitterman's orange bitters that were like very much like attack your taste buds with bitterness. This is very like, let's ease into the bitterness with this softness that may or may not come from a berry known as the currant. Currant, currant, I don't really know to be honest. But it's good. So, so good that I really, 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 really wanted to, I, I, I had, let's see, I had a number of cocktails prepared for the evening. This seems to be a common theme now, right? I prepare a number of cocktails and I don't get to all of them. Evidently, I do way too much time talking, but uh, that just means that apparently there's a lot more content to cover that I want to, which I guess that means the content will continue to flow. I really wanted to do, um, I think I really wanted to do a cocktail utilizing the um, the sassafras bitters. I also want to do a cocktail uh, utilizing the celery bitters. I really wanted to do a cocktail utilizing the mole bitters in a different way than I had used previously. But I really, really, oh, also the char cherry bark vanilla. But I really wanted to try these ones because these are weird in the best ways. And I wanted to see, I I'd never made a cocktail with them before. I have plenty of cocktails now for the bitters. So obviously there's plenty of stuff that I can do even in another episode if I wanted to, which I do. Also have the celery bitter ideas. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Ooh, more than awesome has popped a little link to the Discord out there. I, I just real. I, I continue to remember that those. I don't think those links show up here, do they? Down down here in the. Maybe they do. I don't really know. It doesn't really matter. Just as a reminder, though, we have a Discord, and the Discord is where I post all the recipes that we cover, as well as ideas in the workshop. Um, bitter sounds fun. Maybe we do that again. Who knows? So the recipe that I'm going to end us off on utilizes these charred uh, cedar and currant bitters, and it is from the Bitters Lab website itself. It's that beautiful cocktail that I just had up on the screen, a black Manhattan. So that's what we'll do. Because honestly, that sounds like an absolutely wonderful way to end the evening. A nicely made Manhattan. It's actually interesting. When we, uh, when I had our, our pal, Alan friend Brad up here the other day, I had my first black Manhattan at one of the bars down the street. I just had to give it a try because I saw them in the menu. I was like, that sounds wonderful. So I had to give it a try. Brad says, oh lord, I love a black Manhattan. And I have all the stuff to make one. Lucky for me, um, I also have the stuff to make one. However, it's not exactly the stuff to make one. There, I'm sure there are many different ways to black Manhattan out there, but this is this one. Is Manhattan with two T's? Yeah, it is. Black Manhattan. 
I am under the impression that, there, there, let's see, there are a lot of different black Manhattans out there, and I'm going to do ourselves a favor and Google what a regular black Manhattan would be made with. According to liquor.com, the black Manhattan uh, is a simple variation using specifically a Verna Amaro replacing sweet vermouth and with a different types of bitters added. Now, according to liquor.com, you would make this utilizing rye whiskey, a Verna Amaro Angostura bitters, and a little bit of orange bitters, such as a Reagan's bitters. However, according to Bitters Lab, instead of using a Verna in this case, they suggest the use of Water Pocket Penalin Amaro, a different Amaro that I do not have any remote access to. And also specifically Sugar House Distillery Bourbon. I don't have specifically Sugar House Distillery. I do, however, have charred cedar and currant bitters. And so I'm gonna do a little bit of my own at home bar with the next Black Manhattan utilizing the Amaros that I have on, on, on tap. So on tap, on bottle or whatever. I love Amaros as Brad. So I think the Black Manhattan is a superior version. I let's just jump right into it so in terms of the amaros that i have i i will i will show forth because i'm apparently a big fan of putting all my bottles up on the bar today one of them is this mr black coffee amaro and one of them is i have a vigo amaro and and i'm only bringing the bottles that actually say amaro on them amaro no nino and vigo amaro now when I thought of this originally, I was like, I want to do Vigo Amaro because that is the one that I think that's local to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I felt like, you know what? This is probably going to be great. It's my own like little local black Manhattan, except it's black Philadelphia, apparently, but also Manhattan because that's the drink. And you know what? Who cares anyway? But I'm aware that the Vigo Amaro is really, really earthy. And to me... What I want, and if I was making this cocktail for myself, which I am, because I am the bartender here and also the patron, I'm not gonna go for it in this case. I wanna go for this Mr. Black Coffee Amaro because ugh, I love coffee. And also I feel like those flavors of the charred cedar and currant are gonna be wet, better well-suited with coffee as opposed to earth. And then there's also Amaro Nonino, which is a little more fruity and that apparently only belongs in a paper plane. And I feel like it's a complete divergence from the other ones. However, I will say that we have the power to see what Water Pocket Penelin Amaro tastes like. Pocket Penelin Amaro. And evidently, ooh, hello. Toadstool Penelin Amaro number two? What? Water Pocket Penelin Amaro. Water Pocket Distillery. Penelin Amaro number two. Toadstool Papelin Penelin Amaro. Interesting. Am I 21 years of age or older? Yes. Toadstool Penelin Amaro number two. It is an imperial, an old imperial style bitters formula named it after the Penelin Press of de Desert Passageway under Mount Ellen and Mount Penel in Utah's Henry Mountains. Made with bitter orange peel, bergamot, clove, bay laurel, and it's carrying a spicy finish from cubeb, allspice, and long pepper. It's a lighter citrus and spice style of Amaro. Besides the bitter orange, the bitterness profile is rounded out with chinchona and gentian root. I feel like the closest that I'm going to get to those type of bitters, based off of that description, is going to be the Mr. Black Amaro there. Brad also says that Mr. Black is what you want. Nonino is kind of lemony. I agree with that. I'm going to put these Amaros away. Save them for other, for other times. Another thing that I've tried to get into the habit of doing a little bit more is that, you know, I feel like when I go to... One of the things that I'm afraid of when I go and spend money on a bottle of liquor is how much mileage I'm going to get out of it. For example, before I really started paying attention to stuff like that, I got the Vigo Amaro because uh, one of the cocktail recipes called for Amaro Montenegro and I couldn't find Amaro Montenegro, so I got the the only Amaro that I could find in the store. So I went for that one. And it doesn't it doesn't replace Amaro Montenegro. It just, it just does not. It occupies a completely different space. Um, although I haven't had Amaro Montenegro recently, so I might be taking that out of context. It certainly doesn't pair well for things like the Paper Plane, because Amaro Nonino is what you need for that. Um, so I was a little afraid of that. But oftentimes, these, I feel like that fear is not unique to me. And a lot of times, all it takes is for me to just go to the website of the people who make the, the, the bitters or Amaro liqueur or whatever they have, and they usually provide a couple of recipes for it. And that's 
very nice. It makes me less afraid to pick a random bottle off the shelf and feel like it is up to me to figure out how to use this damn thing or just like drink it straight, I guess. In any case, I get lost in thought often. Our black Manhattan, according to your bitters lab, is going to call for three things. Two ounces of bourbon, one ounce of some Amaro. I'm choosing the Mr. Black Coffee Amaro in this case, and three dashes of our bitters. Everything is going to be added to a mixing glass, mixed on up, and put into a chilled coupe glass, which luckily I prepared enough to put it into a chilled coupe, gla uh, to chill a ch coupe glass, which is just great. I'm going to go grab the only remaining large ice cube because I completely did forgot to fill up from last week. And get things around. Do, 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 do. Don't know why I did the McDonald's theme. Ice cube. Ice cube, ice cube, ice cube. Now we'll add is we're gonna go from one of our bourbons. So I'm gonna think. I'm also curious to see how a sugar house distillery bourbon is and to pick which bourbon out of my collection that is an equivalent. Sugar house bourbon let's see sugar house bourbon sugar house bourbon whiskey corn rye regionally sourced do you have a mash bill on here that would be cool 92 proof no outsourcing no fit ah, subscribe to our newsletter i don't want to do it i don't want to do it i don't want to do it you can't make me but i see rye and corn in there and so i don't know if this is high rye or otherwise i'm gonna do a little bit more research sugar house bourbon mash bill brad says this just makes me want to come back up and bring you all the bottles i don't know what to do with so that they become your problem i will take your donations and i will utilize them i'm happy to take on the brunt of <laughs> bring your bottles to me and i will make sure that they are get, get put to good use in cocktails or my stomach or otherwise send your bottles to me you should get a p.o box or something is it legal to send alcohol like that oh, i really know that it is Bourbon whiskey, I don't see anything saying a mash. Oh, I see 75% corn, 20% rye, 5% malted barley. One of the other bottles I have is very similar to that. Corn, wheat, malted barley. I have, ooh, what was it? What was it? What was it? I think it was. What else is a high rye mash? I used to have, I for the bourbon episode, I had post-it notes in the back of all of my whiskey bottles for what the mash bills were and a lot of them have fallen off and I am completely blanking on which one. I know one had malted barley and stuff in it. I can't remember. Um, but in terms of one that are higher in corn, it might have been, you know what? Might as well just go with a Rittenhouse. Might as well. Bottled and bond. It's the way to go. That's one way to do it, so we'll go for it. This is considered bourbon? Straight rye whiskey. Mm. It calls for bourbon. So you know what I'm gonna go with? I'm gonna go with roses. Four roses bourbon. I'm trying to remember what I've seen you drink. Oh, I feel like larceny is like around 94 proof. So if you're looking for a lower proof corn things, I think I'm gonna go with this one. I haven't used the legend of the four roses in a, in a while. I use this to create infused goji liqueur. So I'm gonna go with this one. It's also bourbon. Construct, you take, construct, words, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. It's a mouthful. Lovely. So we're going to add two ounces or about 59 milliliters to our stirring apparatus of whatever bourbon you got. If you've got Sugar House bourbon, go for it. I don't. So I'm going with Four Roses, which smells lovely. I don't know what the mash bill on this is. Let's, 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 let's Google it. Four Roses mash bill. What do we got? 60% corn, 35% rye, and 5% malted barley. Actually, that's pretty damn close. And what do we got proof-wise? 80 proof. So not as, not as high proof, but this will absolutely get the job done. That's perfect. Swing and a, and a hit in this case. Next, we're going to have one ounce or about 30 milliliters of our Amaro spirit. If you happen to have the Water Pocket Truffle Penalin Amaro number two, that is the recommended bottle. However, I don't. So I'm going with a Mr. Black Amaro, which is like coffee with citrus and orange. And I use this bottle way too much because it's so damn good and it's delightful. And then all we do is we add three dashes of our charred currant 
and well charred cedar and current bitters to our glass which i feel like is going to be very prominent one two three three really big dashes there because i want to get the most out of that because it's This is gonna be so good. This is gonna taste amazing. I'm already, I'm feeling it. There's no way that this tastes, tastes bad. And if it does, well, this, that's just how we end it. Give that sucker a, sir, a stir. Just think about where we've been. We covered a number of bitters so far. The roundup this evening is gonna be really, really easy. I'm just gonna go through the bitters again and try to remember what I said about them. We probably won't dwell on it too long. Your boy's getting tired over here. All right, so now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go into my fridge and grab myself a couple of cocktail cherries, because this is to be garnished with some cocktail cherries. I'm gonna use some that I got from my buddy. As well as grab yourself a chilled coupe glass. Let's see, we're gonna get the most out of this angle. Let me, let me do the angle first and then I'll grab the coupe glass because I was watching the stream from last week and uh, lo and behold, it was really cool to watch the chilled coupe glass chill <laughs> it was really cool to watch that let's see let's see let's see bring you over here a little bit further downward you were a little lopsided are you hello hello there only the slightest bit lopsided there we go get our chill coop glass we're not here to watch maraschino cherries we're here to watch cocktails how does that look oh my god look at it it's so cool just like it was so cool. I was watching through the VOD last week and you can watch as the glass comes to temperature. It is the coolest freaking thing. Got a control F5 for that sexy pour. You damn right we do. Um, I don't have my other julep strainer, so I'm gonna go with this guy. Oh, I love it. Every piece of this has got me feeling real good all over. Wow, that is absolutely excellent. I cannot wait to put that in my mouth. I'm not trying to be weird about it. Now let's add a couple of cocktail cherries on top of it. I'm going to take my spoon. Give me my spoon. Come back here. I'm just going to like, I'm not even going to bother skewering them. I'm just going to drop them in. Oh no, I dropped it. In the glass. Give me another one. There we go. That is just... <laughs> I say maniacally laughing at myself. <laughs> like, like, welcome to my evil lair. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie you up and I'm gonna serve you finely crafted cocktails. That's how I torture my victims. Oh my god, it looks so good. Let me try to take a photo of this from my angle. The Black Manhattan. Oh my goodness gracious, that's lovely. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was just so spoiled by the Black Manhattan from last week that I was like, oh, I gotta take this home and make one of my own. So, right off the nose, in those coffee liqueur vibes, love it. Getting a little hint of that bourbon. Ooh, I can smell the alcohol. I can feel the alcohol. excellent it was really good sorry i was distracted for a moment i heard saxophone for some reason i'm not going crazy i promise that <laughs> this this cocktail is making me hear saxophones at the distance this is really good this is like it is a less sweet manhattan there is really not a hint of sweetness to be found here except for the little bit that exists in that Mr. Black Coffee Amaro, but that blend of the chocolatey orange notes, which is coming from the Mr. Black Amaro, is pairing super well with those more like oakwood cask notes from the bourbon that's manifesting as like a vanilla. There's a smokiness, very, very slightly, that's coming with the coffee flavor that is coming, if I had to guess, from the charred cedar and currant bitters. There's like, also like a sideness to it that like 
I wanted to say like this weird flavor might be coming from like a bourbon aspect I'm not getting, but I think it's being imparted by the bitters a little more. I actually want to add more bitters to this to see like, kind of like how I did with the other one to see like what flavor components I'm getting from the bitters and see if I can better piece those out. So I'm gonna try that. Brad says, for serious though, the three of us are doing Black Manhattans and Bottomless Wings on a Tuesday sometime. Seriously though, that's a place down the, place down the road. Serves Black Manhattans and apparently Endless Wings. It was the last place that we went to on our little adventure. Very good. Pro Tap. Pro Tap is my, Pro Tap is my pro tip bar recommendation here in Philadelphia. It's right down the street from me. Ooh. Oh yeah, those extra bitters added. It's more bitter than before. Obviously, I added bitters, but that, but that, like, like almost like. I really don't know what a current berry tastes like, but there's notes there that almost reminds me of like grape skin, like like a like dark red grape skin almost as if i was drinking something with a little bit of like a wine in it it's interesting to think that like a piece of my brain is being tricked here i know there is no vermouth in here whatsoever but these bitters almost make me think that there is just like a little bit of it it's certainly not as sweet and not as not as like cherry and fruit and sweet forward as if you were to actually use a sweet vermouth in it but those other aspects of the vermouth things that are coming across as a little more vegetal and a little more like skin of the fruit maybe that colored the the wine that was made to use the vermouth is what i'm getting with the black manhattan and it's delightful and it's really really boozy it doesn't help that the cherries that i decided to use are cherries that have been soaking in moonshine from a very good friend of ours aka little abe and uh, it was a gift and uh, they're super boozy and they've just been sitting in there become more and more boozy so this is this is my last cocktail of the evening and absolutely i'm going to finish it by the time i'm done editing and stuff after the stream is over so where have we been so far this has been a wonderful stream i it was it was nice to be able to take the time to explore something like bitters just to just to get something just to get something down in the records of me having tried all of my bitters it actually helps me too one of the reasons why i even want to do these streams anyway is because my memory fades i'm not that good at remembering certain things and what i can do is after chaptering out all the videos that wind up on youtube somewhere i can go back through my own videos and be like what was it that i said about those bitters like how how can i use my own notes to be able to craft cocktails with them in the future and uh if i ever actually get into my like if i ever actually tell myself and follow through with that then uh, maybe I'd wind up, maybe I'll wind up getting to that next level of mixology, which will eventually come on its own. At the very least, I dressed for the part this evening. Or at least I tried to. So what we did this evening was sample bitters, all the bitters, all the bitters that I happen to have behind my bar. I've collected quite a few of them over the years. It's certainly not exhaustive. I'd say that this is meager compared to like, let's say the selection that you see at the store. This was only enough bitters to just barely reach two and a half hours of talking about just bitters and bitters alone. Um, that's the prime category for streams such as this. We started off talking about Ang Whoa, hi there. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Angostura bitters. The two that I happen to have here are their aromatic bitters or their orange bitters. The orange bitters here, more on the sweeter side. Kind of like the orange juice or like orange zest or somewhere in between. Adds a nice sweetness to your cocktails without being super duper overpowering. The Angostura bitters, apparently Angostura bark, tree bark. It's a thing. It's very baking spicy. It's kind of cinnamon. It's kind of clovey. It's got that nice cherry note to it. It's delightful. And a classic in cocktails such as the Manhattan, for instance. We also next went to, uh, I had this whole collection of the bitter truth bitters, including, but not limited to, celery bitters, which had notes of like lemongrass and celery itself. It tasted very nice and almost citrusy, not super potent. We had their aromatic bitters, which I can't quite remember what it was. It was... It had notes of like baking spices like clove and allspice. It kind of smelled like the way a Christmas candle would if you walked into a store and you said it smelled like Christmas and I would agree with you. It also, excuse me, it also smelled like the Angostura bitters 
because apparently it uses Angostura bark. We also had these Bitter Truth orange bitters, which were a lot more bitter orange. Like this was probably one of the bitterest, bitterest bitters that we had. And it was the orange bitters from the Bitter Truth. We also had the Jerry Thomas Decanter bitters, which are a very light type of bitters, not super duper um, flavorful, but enough to kind of change the characteristics of the cocktail that you put them in. I think it was, I have to, go back into the book here because I can't exactly remember what it was about these bitters in particular except for the fact that they were adapted from a recipe uh, from Mr. Mr. Jerry Thomas himself once upon a time. I'm trying to go through the book and find it but I just can't. Oh there we are. Jerry Thomas had notes of it's like candied ginger oils of tangerine and almonds. I definitely remember having those more citrusy notes to it. It was very very pleasant. And then we also had these Creole bitters. And the Creole bitters were very very like a kitchen spicy. It's all those spices that I would imagine that would be in the kitchen that is more ready. Like I think I remember it was these bitters that gave me kind of like a, an impression of like sourdough bread. Like if there's any particular spices that go in sourdough bread, that's the kind of like bitterness, like spicefulness that I get from the Creole bitters because apparently the, uh, the Creole style is very old French quarter and it's the kind of, it's like a cooking style apparently. I'm not super familiar with the term to be honest. However, after that we moved on to, it was, I think, I don't remember if it was Fee Brothers or Pashad's. I think we went to Pashad's bitters next. Pashad's bitters I have a very complicated relationship with. I once upon a time thought it tasted like dog food. Sometimes it tastes like grapefruit. This time, apparently it was supposed to taste like mint and like anise and oh what was the other one and gentian i've never tried gentian before not specifically at least so i have to say that it tastes like gentian because there's pieces of it that i just can't even begin to parse and instead of being minty i found that it almost tasted kind of basilly this time around kind of like a cinnamon kind of like a mint but somewhere in between it was very interesting and like somehow every single time i take a taste of Pashad's bitters i'm 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 faced with something different every single time um and maybe that's maybe that's a problem or maybe that's a good thing I'm not super sure yet after that we moved on to the fee brothers bitters of which i'm gonna take a long sip of my black manhattan vermont just to calm myself down for a little bit get very adrenaline during these these streams we first tried the peach bitters, which honestly, not very bitter at all. It tasted a lot like those peach candies that you can get from the store. The one with like the pink on one side and like the yellow on the other. Absolutely delicious. It just tastes super good. It's super sweet. I would not even, I'd be wrong to say that this tasted bitter because it's just not. It just tastes great. It's. I feel like it would be great to add peach flavor to literally anything and it's just delightful. And then these old fashioned bitters, the Fee Brothers old fashioned bitters, were. Oh. Citrusy. Almondy. That's what they were. It was very, it was very much like, uh, like, uh, almost like, it's, it's giving me almost like beach vibes. It reminds me of like, um,. I took another, uh, I have obviously some smelling notes from earlier, but when I s smelled it just now, it gave me like notes of like, like the sea, like whatever, like those candles that describe them tell us, describe themselves as smelling like sandalwood. It's, it's sandalwood bitters, baby, or something like that. It just feels, seemed very coastal this time around. Um, I don't remember what my notes were earlier for that. So, hmm, well, I've got new notes now to, uh, to, uh, uh, append to those. Afterwards, I moved on to, uh, I think it was the Bitter Housewife Grapefruit Bitters, which actually, to me, didn't really satisfy the section of grapefruit in terms of a bitter's quality. It was bitter. It added a nice, it had a nice angle to it. And if I had to pick a citrus, I would say that it was grapefruit, not lime, not lemon, or otherwise, or orange. However, it gave me almost like the taste of like cucumber. And I was so inspired by the taste of cucumber that we went to the Bitter Housewives website and grabbed a gin old fashioned recipe. And I swapped out the gin for this cucumber jalapeno vodka of mine to create a cucumber jalapeno old fashioned. And it was really good. Nicely sweetened. It had um, two full ounces or about 59 milliliters of cucumber vodka. Uh, I'm sorry, cucumber 
jalapeno tequila in this case the brand was 21 seeds a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of simple syrup and like three four to six dashes of the bitter housewife grapefruit bitters um and if you had a grapefruit you could do a little twist on it uh, i didn't so i put a little lemon twist in there and it's very nice well i can like I, I would say balanced in a sense that like it's not overly spicy from the jalapeno. It's nice and refreshing from the cucumber notes from the actual cucumber jalapeno tequila, as well as the uh, the additions of the grapefruit bitters. And also it's got a nice sweetness to it. Half an ounce of simple syrup was just enough. Nicely balanced, especially for somebody who's into the things with a little bit of a kick to them. But moving on from the Bitter Housewife bitters, then we went to Woodford Reserve bitters. Woodford Reserve bitters was, I think, another one of the batch, uh, the the section of bitters where they were all like from small batches, and I think these ones are specifically made in bourbon barrels that they use that are used, you know, like leftover from the industry over in uh, bourbon country in Kentucky. Um, we tried their chocolate bitters. Oh, actually, this is the bitters bottle. We tried their chocolate bitters, which is very, very baking chocolatey. It reminded me so much of this like block of chocolate that Anna brought back from Guatemala. It was dark, it was bitter, it was cocoa powder, and it had a nice drying effect to it too. It's like the essence of cocoa. It's wonderful. The sorghum and sassafras bitters were very interesting to me in the sense that it felt very like tree forward. Like, I don't, I'm not super familiar with the flavor of sassafras, uh, except that it kind of tastes a little bit like birch beer, and I'm totally not familiar with the flavor of sorghum. But this was almost like birch beer meets the tree itself, uh, in the sense that it is bitter, it is... I don't know how else to describe, like, birch bark, but, like, I've, I've ripped birch bark off a tree before it smelled it, and it reminded me of the flavor that I got from that, so I'm just gonna keep with that and move on to the other ones. The other bitters that I used, ooh, I got some things mixed around, there we go. The next bitters that I used is actually some bitters that I got from another Twitch tender of ours uh, named Colino12. Colino makes his own bitters and gives them out during some of the uh, trivia nights and other things that he does over there on his channel. So uh, go check him out. It's, really, it's a really fun community over there with games and trivia and blackjack and He's got a lot of games over there, it's very fun. But we had his mole bitters, which to me were very, very prevalent on the chili flavors. It's got like, like a, almost like, almost like somebody liquefied chili powder, or perhaps infused it in liqueur, uh, and then combine it with a little bit of that kind of like chocolatey cocoa powderiness, as well as there was something else that I was getting, and I can't quite remember what it was. Maybe if I open this up and give it a smell, I'll be able to remember it. can't quite exactly remember what it was but it's spicy while also being slightly chocolatey it would add a very nice spice to pretty much anything that you would add it to kind of like it reminds me of like um uh um ancho reyes well, ancho reyes is that right chili liqueur ancho reyes chili liqueur has a um has a very nice spice to it very akin to what those bitters take taste like next we went to oh god so many bitters Bitter Cube, uh, Slow Crafted Bitters, Cherry Bark and Vanilla. Apparently they're also another small batch, and this these bitters just straight up remind me of walking into an Insomnia Cookies and munching down on Snickerdoodles or whatever cookies that they may have. Snickerdoodles, like sugar cookies, otherwise. It smells like a wonderful bakery at 2.30 in the morning when you're out there very, very hungry. It's great, it's delicious. I feel like it would go amazingly in cookies, and I want nothing more than just like, take this entire bottle and just like deposit it into a cookie recipe, but uh, cocktails must be made. So I will keep them. I would refrain from that. Unless I start a cooking show. Who really knows? The, the world is our oyster. And then finally, we settled upon these bitter la Bitters Lab charred cedar and currant. I have a very interesting history with currant berries in general. Apparently that nostalgia was not activated by these bitters, but the charred notes, something that's like kind of like burning a marshmallow on a fire was prevalent as well as those kind of like I guess, kind of woody, sappy notes that I would suppose has to come from the cedar. And there's also this like weird fruit skin flavor to it that must be coming from the currant. I, I can't say that I am very current with my impressions of currant berries, uh, either the red ones or the black ones, or if there are other ones out there, I, I just don't know. There's probably like, um, like currant liqueurs out there that I can probably get my hands on just to try to do a little bit of a better compare and contrast. And maybe one day we'll do so. But not today. Instead, uh, with today, we're, uh, we're done. 
This is all I got. I can't do anymore. I know we only made two cocktails this evening. Oh, uh, we made a black Manhattan. That was fun. Utilizing the uh, charred cedar and currant bitters. It's it's delightful. I mixed it with some Mr. Black Amaro and some Four Roses bourbon. Oh my god. And it's just it's just lovely. In any case, that's all I've got for this evening. I am I'm, man, these last couple bar streams have been very, very tiresome for me. It's absolutely incredible. Just to give a quick update, quick, quick couple of updates for the community, I did post some announcements in our Discord server. Uh, one in particular being that I am not going to do any regularly scheduled Monday streams anymore. Life priorities change, things are getting a little hectic, Anna and I are getting married in a few months, work has been like shooting up in terms of stuff to do, and uh, I realized I gotta, I gotta reprioritize things a little bit, so I gotta go back into my bunker a little bit and really muddle on some things. I've got ideas about doing some more different types of streams in the future, perhaps a little more on the ad hoc schedule, and I know that kind of goes against the whole philosophy of like, you know, stream on a schedule, keep it, whatever. It just doesn't work for me right now, at least for that. Bar streams will continue to happen on Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time because it's just a nice place. To, it's a nice way to kind of cadence out the week and I have a lot of fun during this. Uh, but expect to see more things in the future. I will also remind everyone as well that I've been very curious about doing other types of content on other different social platforms. So if you look over to that side, I have a TikTok. There is a an Instagram, there is the Discord, the Twitter, and the YouTube. YouTube is home to VODs and Shorts. Same thing with the TikTok. I don't really post too much in there very often, but I'm thinking about putting stuff there soon. I like to think that I'm a man of my word. That might be wrong. We'll see about that. I am active on Twitter, making posts about... I say random shit on Twitter. There's no pressure to follow there. But for everything, everything is kept up to date on the Discord server. That's where it lives. That's where we land. And um, links are down below, wherever you may find it. In any case, I had a lot of fun here. And I hope you did as well. This has been great. And I'm glad that I was finally able to go through the bitters that I have in my collection. And once upon a... At some point in time, we'll have more bitters to explore in the future. But this has been fun in the meantime. To everybody out there, if the moon is shining over there for you like it is for me, then I have, hope you have a wonderful rest of your night. If the sun is starting to rise and you are now starting off your day with perhaps potentially some bitters in your cup, put it in your coffee. You never know what you might find. Maybe start it off with... Maybe you have some tea. Put a couple of bitters in there um, in small amounts. I mean, apparently you can go to the store and buy them even if you're a miner so i mean it can't be that bad for you right who really knows dawn twilight day night midnight or otherwise no matter where you are i hope you have a wonderful rest of your time in the meantime y'all i will see you next time on another episode with the bar with the next next wednesday or some other time who really knows i'm sporadic sometimes in any case y'all i enjoyed your company